Hello. <clears throat> Hello, everybody. It is me. Hope everybody is doing uh, well this... this. Oh. Hold on. Kezu is here, y'all. I was wondering why the music was so quiet. This joke is on my playlist just for me. It's not for anybody else, it's just for me. Oh. <laughs> oh, hell yeah. So, uh, uh, welcome back, everybody. Uh, we are, you know, you know how it be when one plays Blutus Bornus. Um, but yeah, third Bloodborne stream. Um, I don't think we will finish the game today. We may get close to finishing the, the base game, and then we will have to, um... We'll have to do all the DLC, which will take a, a lot longer than it will for us to to get through the rest of the main game's bosses. Because I think... Let's see. Because we just went into Yahargul, the Unseen Village. So... From there, it's really just a matter of going through Yahargul. Yahargul will lead us to the last area, which will have, I think, just a couple more bosses. Hey, Nobo. Welcome to the, the Stramus. The Stramus Whamus. We're doing a bunch of Bloodborne stuff. Uh, I am uh, partaking in a little bit of, you know, we're doing a little bit of, a little bit of come dungeoning while waiting for a stream to begin. I think I'm going to do one more run and then head back. Uh, so I did, I did, I did do a little bit of farming off stream. Uh, so I, I've done a little leveling. Uh, we're now level 117, which is like, we're on track. This is our, we're very close to being end game level. Powered level vitality to 45. And then I raised our skill in blood tinge to 40 and 47. So we're getting close to the caps for those skills. Which is why I'm deciding to stop right now. I'm doing a little bit, and I know it's sacrilege to level up your stamina bar in Bloodborne because you don't really ever need to. But uh, I've decided to go ahead and uh, I've decided to go ahead and level up the stamina bar just just to for a, a one extra swing of my weapon or so. Oh, the doll is sleeping. Gotta wake her up. I must. What is? Very well. There we go. I broke my egg? Damn. How are you gonna have kids now? Where was I? Uh, unseen headstone. Here we go. We'll just jump right back into it. Um, so I also did a little bit of cursed, some cursed chalice hopping uh, here and there. Uh, and our weapon, I believe, is at plus eight now. New egg come down every month, silly. SMH my head. Women, am I right, chat? So our weapon's at plus eight, which means uh, weapons cap off at plus ten, just like they do in, in the Souls games. So we are we are more or less at the end of our of the Chicago's upgrade life, which is good good for us because it's gonna let us uh, sweep through. Can't stand them. <laughs> uh, I don't know why I'm actually coming back down here. There's no items for me to get. We already did a little. I remember we did a little little scampering run down here. Um, when we when we first got into your hard gold to grab some upgrade materials So now we're gonna have to walk down the old the old amygdala path Amygdala wants to yoink us 
We don't want to get picked up by this one. It won't teleport us anywhere special. It'll it'll just frenzy us for a bunch of damage. See, we're we're two shotting the normal enemies in this area because our weapon is our weapon is not too strong for this area. It's just on the upper it's on the upper par of what we need, which is nice. It'll make getting through this area a little easier. So these bell ringing women are summoning all these annoying dudes. Kill them makes them weaker, which we want. Hmm. <laughs> All down here. Walk into the trap hallway. Bell ringing woman rings a bell and, and summons a, a bunch of dudes behind you. And a big dude in front of you. Oh wow, I mistimed that. There we go. So it's really just that easy. Bunch of dudes behind you doesn't sound so bad. Hey, you and me both, Nobo. The air rune. I forgot what the air rune does. You already have one? Oh yeah, visceral attacks blood echoes. We love that. We love that rune. Good rune. Bell ringing woman up here. A killing her does not get rid of all of the people she summons, but it does stun them and make them way weaker. Which is nice. We love weak enemies. Just walking through, picking up all, all of the loosely scattered items that are around. That's the way forward. I'm gonna come up here and open up the shortcut door. Which goes right back to where we just were. That way whenever we don't have to go through the dude hallway, we can just kill the bell lady immediately. Um, there's a bunch of witches up there. We're gonna come around here to the right. There's just a couple witches over here. Actually, I don't know if they're full witches. They're like the women inside of uh, Himmick Charnel Lane. That area that we sprinted through at mock speed. Hi, Midala. I'm coming down here for an item. Ambush Gatling Gun Man. Because the game thinks you're going to walk right up to the chest and the big dude. Which you probably do. But we're, we're wise to the games. They can't trick us anymore, chat. We're too gamer for deception. And we get another magic item that we can't use. The Tiny Trinitrus. Tiny Trinitrus is actually rad. The Tiny Trinitrus uh, calls down like a line of lightning in front of you. It's really, really strong. It takes a bunch of bullets to use. You can see all the enemies are, are back now. The bell ringing woman keeps respawning more and more enemies. So I need to go, I need to deal with the bell ringing woman. To do that, we're gonna go right down here. Do a little bit of fallen. There's an entrance that takes us above the area with the chest that we were in, which is where the bell ringing woman for this little area is. Every area that has these red summoned enemies has a bell ringing woman to go with it. And we can drop down and pick up Upper Cathedral Key. That will let us get into an optional secret area back in Yarnum proper. Uh, which we'll probably do uh, right after we finish Yahargul. I reckon we'll do it before Nightmare of Mensis. Coming back through, you can see all the ladies that respawned are either over here or went back into being nothing. Ah, they're just over here now. Now it's time to clean up. You can see an amygdala with eyes over there just doing its thing. Interesting thing about the binocular in this game, you can play the whole game almost in first-person mode with it equipped. 
Don't want to be caught in that laser. It hurts like a lot. <laughs> and it wouldn't be so bad if not for the fact that there are all these ads here. Because these, these grandmas will beat you up while you're down. Grandmas exploit weaknesses. You heard it here first, folks. Bing. You can actually see down there the area I soft-locked myself out of. Embarrassingly. I forgot to light the lamp down there when I first came through here. I think actually I came in rather slow. There's supposed to be a shambling mass out here. But I dallied for too long. See, there's some puppers. Oh, and a man with a gun. I forgot about the man with a gun. Gotta go deal with the man with the gun. Oh my goodness, a convenient gap in the railing. It's just that easy to um, We're gonna ignore all the enemies and kill the bell ringing woman. Now we can kill them all. Easy. Oh, here come the puppies. Go away. <laughs> I forgot that my gun actually does damage. Blood tinge builds. They're very cool. In most other builds, you never have a reason to upgrade your, your, your firearm. Because the firearm does not really do much, doesn't do a lot of damage. All it's used for is parrying and upgrading, it doesn't change that function. So usually you never upgrade your pistol. So now we are down here. In this enemy, there used to be two snatchers, but now you can see that there's a bunch of NPC hunters. Uh, and this is uh, a bit of an annoyance uh, because they will all three try to ambush you. You can see there's a secret third member down there. When you walk into the middle of the room to get the item, all three will come out and attack you all at once. I think you just have one, maybe two to deal with, but there's this guy down here. Let's see if I can get a free backstab. Now, luckily, nice thing about these NPC hunters is they don't respawn. So if I can get rid of one, just out of the equation, don't have to deal with them. I think the others should have aggroed onto me. There it, there it is. I think I killed the scariest one. The one I just took out is the one who can actually use the tiny tinnitus as a weapon. So it makes him so scary. Tiny tinnitus does a lot of damage. You can see that these these hunters, they're no bloody crow of Canehurst. Can can flail on them, they don't input read, and they don't parry. This one has a cannon, so I, I don't want that to hit me. Not one bit. There we go. All three dealt with. That was actually pretty pretty painless. Usually I have to to do a lot of flanking to deal with those guys. Gives me a full twenty quicksilver bullets, the cannon dude. So they, they give some pretty generous drops. And then we get the moon rune, which is what we needed. The moon runes are what gives you bonus blood echoes. So they are they are universally good to have. Should try to have one at all times. Uh, now we are, this is a flesh werewolf. It's just a bunch of human limbs all tied together to make uh, a gross, wet looking version of the werewolves we were fighting. Um, I believe that these werewolves have a chance to drop twin in twin bloodstone shards and i believe they can also drop chunks so if you don't want to like figure out doing chalice dungeon farming they are perhaps the best way to get a bunch of uh, chunks very quickly because there's a couple of them in this area you can see that the the kidnappers are dead and they have some chunks on them so if you don't do uh dark beast parl that big lightning bone creature um when you first are able to enter this area, you can come back here at the end of the game and, and try again. It's gonna be another flesh werewolf down here. Oh, what's with the emote, nobody? <laughs> Is it perhaps related to flesh werewolves? Uh, no, it was just I joined and you didn't say anything, so I didn't know if like the game was loud and you didn't know I was here yet. <laughs> uh, I have streamer mode on, so I don't hear it. Don't hear the joining noise. So you don't? Or you... Don't. Silences all of Discord's sounds. 
How'd you know I joined? Did you see my little thing pop up? Uh, no, I saw you make a little emote in chat. Oh. And then I looked over, and then you made a little a little noise. And I was like, oh, oh. welcome. <laughs> Good morning, nobody. Good morning. Did you just wake <laughs> up? Um, <clears throat> no. I woke up a few hours ago, but just kind of started to get moving, made breakfast. Oh, yeah. I also just ate breakfast. I just got back from eating breakfast, and I got cozy and started streaming. Oh, what did you get for breakfast? Uh, went to the dining hall. They had, uh, uh, you can make your own breakfast taco. And then I had some cereal, mm -hmm. some fruity pebbles. Mmm. But you know, the, the, you know what the real crime is, nobody? What? No chalky milk. Oh. SMH my head. That is a crime. Truly a tragedy. Oh my god, I'm so glad that we're actually doing the skill Blood Tinge build. Because the Chicago is so fucking strong. This weapon is really strong. <laughs> and, and it's one thing that I've upgraded my weapon, but like, this area has all the items to get you to plus 9. Just as you explore, you'll get a bunch of Bloodstone chunks. So we're going to go from plus 8 to plus 9 before we're, we fight the boss, almost certainly. That was a shortcut door I just opened. That's why I'm not peeking inside. Yeah, it's 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 a nice temperature out uh, where I live as well. Um, it's been pretty cold recently, which I like. I love I love colder weather. Um, so I was uh, I'm glad that it's not like we're not dipping down into like 30 degrees or anything. It's like a nice it's a nice even 40 to 50 most days. Mm -hmm. Which I think is ideal living conditions, if I'm being super honest. That does it. It's like nice jack weather. Yeah. I, w I wish we got down fish. to below freezing. Ugh. For snow. I love snow. Last time I saw snow was over a decade ago. Um, Overrated. And it, <laughs> it, it was when I was in elementary school. And, mm -hmm. and uh, uh, the, the roadways in Texas where I live are not built to handle any form of freezing mm -hmm. uh and then like like most places that you go they'll have like like road ice or like what road salt that you put on the yeah. oh i missed the optional exit ruins your shoes it, it does ruin your shoes um you gotta but... spray your shoes. <laughs> the problem in texas is that they don't stock enough of it to actually cover any significant uh freezing right which is why whenever we get like a snow day everyone uh, every the, it, when, whenever it snows or whenever it gets below everyone freezing panics. everyone everyone panics but there's like a snow day and they have to cancel school and work and stuff uh mm -hmm. because the the roads are are too iced so over funny. to drive on because they don't carry enough road salt to actually make the roads drivable like they do in colder states they're just mm -hmm. never stocked for it I just think it's so funny because there'll be like three feet of snow and it's like school's not canceled But like other places that aren't used to snow will get like a thin layer on the ground and They're like, oh my god, we have to cancel Because well, you get three feet of snow and then you pull out onto the road and then you can drive on the roads usually You're not driving through three feet of snow But he, he, yeah. here in Texas if there's three feet of snow It means that all the roads are covered in three feet of snow mm -hmm. and There's not enough road salt to melt the snow off so you literally cannot you couldn't even shove your vehicle through which is nice for us whenever we get snow days. But it's been it's there been like is a lots decade. of times. Used to go There's up to lots of times though. You go. Oh no no no! You say what you were gonna say. I'm touching the um. bath. <laughs> I was gonna say there's lots of times where we will get like a good one or two feet of snow, and not all the roads are are like I are salted. Because there's so there's too many roads to salt every single one of them, mm -hmm. so a lot of times you just have to drive through the snow. <laughs> people just they know how to. They have the skills. Because they're used to it. Yeah, but, but people who aren't used to it, they freak out because their car, you can't control. It doesn't feel the same when you're driving. I've driven in snow before. It doesn't feel the same, it's and they panic weird. and they freak out. Because your car, you feel like you're driving on like you snow. don't have control. Like because your car is like slowly slipping. As you're driving, you have to drive really slow. It's a, it is a little scary, but like, 
everyone drives. Not not for a big slow, strong nobody, so. of course. No. Nobody's just too big and strong to be to experience the emotion fear. You're like, simply laws too epic. do not apply. Like you can drive five miles an hour. Laws do not apply when there's snow anymore. Like drive as slow as you need to. Because mm -hmm. my mom was like, "Don't worry about people getting mad at you for driving too slow in the snow. Like you're just being cautious and safe." Oh yeah, what are they gonna do? Get out of their car and trudge through the snow to yell at you? The hell no. <laughs> they're gonna honk their little horns and they're gonna be patient because they can't do nothing else. And the, it's not like they can go around you because they'll just go into deeper snow. Yeah, because that happens sometimes though. You're in like a little car and you're really slowly going through the snow and a big truck comes up behind you that's got like the chains on truck the wheels. Wheel. Yeah, the like, chains on the wheels and the. Like their car is stable and they're like, rrr, rrr. they're like, come on now. And it's like, bro, leave me alone. We aren't all. We me. aren't our prepared for off-roading text go somewhere else <laughs> so yeah we we because it's it we don't even get snow on our roads the, the snow mm -hmm. melts off the roads and it just leaves ice <laughs> yeah because it doesn't <laughs> snow enough <laughs> which is the it sucks so bad yo yeah, the your horrible the set <clears throat> As long as your snow doesn't turn into ice. Oh, it's always like, ice. It's always slushy ice snow. Yeah, see if it's if it's if it doesn't turn into ice, you can drive pretty fine. But the second it melts and then turns to ice. and then gets cold again, it's done. That's so dangerous to drive on. Like, it's can't. so difficult. It's not even like you can go slow on ice. You just there's just you get onto the ice it's and just, you, you just you have no grip. You, yeah. Yeah. You you do you lose your gorilla grip. And like without your gorilla grip, what are you gonna do? You know? Yeah, I remember one time I was driving in Texas with my family and we were in like we were starting to get to the warmer states and um where they get less snow and there was a huge snowstorm and there were so many cars in the ditches and we were watching cars go into the ditches because they didn't know they were on the highway and they it was like oh, a mess. No. But I mean, me and my family, we're fine. <laughs> we're just driving through it. Slowly. But we're still going. People just were going in the ditches. And it was like, oh my gosh. It was crazy how many cars we saw in the ditch that day. Did, did they go down not knowing that there was snow there and just get stuck? Probably. Yeah, because it like, it, it started and it like went crazy. It was, it was a very intense snowstorm. Never had a snowstorm uh, before. See, the thing about snow is, like, it's pretty, but... Snow is only really nice for the aesthetic. And it's fun to play in, but it's so cold. And but when I'm, you have, I like, a day-to-day -day life to live... I want to play in the snow, nobody. I when do I, I get to play in the snow? Just, like, go to Canada in the wintertime. God damn Canadians hoarding all the snow. <laughs> <laughs> Tell your prime minister to give us the snow. <laughs> Go to Justin Trudeau's office, knock on his door, and be like, the Americans want the snow back. You can't keep... I'll go to his office. Mom said it's the Americans' turn with the snow. I'll give him a firm slap in the face. And I'll say, Justin? The snow. <laughs> the, the snow. Give it to them. Now. Do it. Do it now! <laughs> Just. <laughs> I would not. I would not. I would not be like, oh, sir, Prime Minister Trudeau. Be like Justin. Would anyone please. in Canada say Prime Minister Trudeau? I'm pretty no sure one e him. everyone no, just says Justin. I don't think anyone likes him. No one likes him. <laughs> he's so lame. But he keeps he winning sucks. those damn elections. I guess. S M H. Is there a term limit? How does being Prime Minister work? Um, Explain you can just Canadian keep government. being prime minister as long as you get voted in. And you, you so have stupid. like a, you have like a, you don't have like a, 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 a the same government. You have like a parliamentary system. Of government. I don't know what that means. You have a parliament. You have a. I literally don't know what that word parliament means. or like a congress or. Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe I don't know how Canada's governed. <laughs> I don't. I really don't. I just know that. Justin I just Trudeau know Justin He's actual garbage. He's getting voted in, and there's no way. Everyone hates him. 
There's no <laughs> way. No one bothers to vote him out, I think. Like, I know people who I know people's parents are like, oh, yeah, my parents nobody. voted for Justin Trudeau, and it's like, why? Why? <laughs> Does he even do anything you like? <laughs> he doesn't do anything. Oh my god, I hate him so much. Nobody, we, we're gonna have. Terrible man. It's the one, nobody. The one is being reborn, nobody. Wong? Wong? They're ringing their, their fancy little bells. And then the, the big moon's gonna shit out. That's so the big moon. Mm -mm. It's about to poopy out the one. The moon's giving birth? No. It just looks like it is. Oh. There he is! Uh, the one! Uh, it's him! Uh, oh, he's not. It's him! Uh, there he is! He's dead. So it's just like a bunch of dead people. It's it, it, what's well, the one reborn? Nobody. There he is. It's him. He's just been reborn. You know. This is gross. He's the one. He is nasty. Gotta go take care of all the bell ladies, cause they they the bell ladies will heal him. Gotta clap their cheeks. Can you feel me? Whoa. I appreciate that they have like these these unique red vests. These like red cloaks, I mean. Mm. It's a, it's a, it makes them easy to spot. This is true. It's a very vibrant red. Not a lot of super saturated colors in in Bloodborne's game world. Except for I guess like the cosmic blues and stuff. This red is just it's really vibrant. Okay, now we can clown on the one reborn. A lot of people find the one reborn to be a very difficult boss fight. That's because they try to fight the one reborn instead Without of just getting the instead ladies. of just walking to his funny lump and just hitting his funny oh. lump over and over again. You, you see, I instantly downed him. It's just that easy, folks. And if you walk up to like the actual like person part, you can do more damage to it. But yeah, you could you can try to fight his actual body. But. Uh, you know, and then he flails his little armies around, or you can just walk to his big lump and just kind of beat on it for free. Also, he conjures down a bunch of like piles of goo and corpses to hit you, and also all of his 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 hands are covered in a bunch of little legs that will kick wherever they're standing. Oh, I killed mm -hmm. the boss already. Oops. Let's go. I was still talking about the pause. I didn't realize that I'd killed him. LMAO. Lol. LMAO. Hi, Rowdy. Rowdy really said hydrate. <laughs> what was that sound? That was literally nothing. You didn't hear anything, I promise. Oh, I guess I didn't hear anything. She promised. Now we get to, we get to touch a mummy, nobody. So these dorks are the reason that the uh, that there's like a blood moon tonight and everything's going wacky. It's because of these mm -hmm. dorks with their head cages. They accidentally summoned a, a great old one into this reality. That boss was so disgusting my cat left. Yeah. I imagine cats would love one reborn. Just a big lump of flesh for them to like claw at, you know? Yeah. Cats love that shit. We're on the second floor of the Nightmare Lecture Hall. And call this shit a 9 a.m. class. Gotta wake up at 9 a.m. to attend the Nightmare Lecture Hall. Primary studies include being goo. But my classes are over now. All I have to do is study for, uh, I think, one more remaining final. Meeting, uh, I have a meeting this Thursday. Uh, for my, uh, for the, the new research group that I'm, okay. I'm very excited. Oh, oh my gosh, my butt hurts so bad. <laughs> Damn, uh, get a question for your ass, girly. 
because like I I did I I had to film a video yesterday and I took like 30 takes. In every take, I was like squatting down and I had to squat up or squat up. Squat up. <laughs> and I so I was just do like all for like an hour. I was just doing that, and it got me good. Hey, but I mean, squat exercise is gonna get your butt's gonna get so toned. Yeah, my, oh my gosh, my butt is sore. My legs a little bit, but my butt. <laughs> Good workout. Uh, I guess. Now you gotta have to take a day to take it easy on your butt. Yeah. With the butt damage you've dealt it. <laughs> Ow. Rowdy said squat up. Yeah. So true. So true. <laughs> okay, that seemed. That seemed stupid. What seems stupid? You said so true. I said so true, but to me, they were at the same time. But I have the volume on the stream, and I heard truly that you said it way before me. It just sounded like you were echoing me. It's not. You do that all the time. Yeah, but to me, I was like, oh my god, we said that at the same time. Oh my god, uh, <laughs> we're so in sync. Uh... And then I listened to the stream, and I was like, oh my gosh, I was so off. <laughs> I found out I that you can do the Chicago's running heavy without losing health. Oh. You can do like a little heavy thrust. A heavy thrust, nobody. Oh my. You heard it correctly. Doesn't do as much damage as a normal heavy attack would, but I mean, it's there for our enjoyment. Wait, where do- Oh, that's where I get- The last third chord is not in the Nightmare Lecture Hall. You get it from Virgo. Right. We have two. We could time travel now. We got everything we need. Actually, hold on, I need to kill our grandmother, so I need to do that too. But do you want to see? Oh, we're about to meet Patches. You met Patches, right? Yeah, yeah. You've done all the Patches quest line in three. Yeah. Uh, this is what Patches looks like in this game. Wait, what? Oh, Patches. Um. Ah. Uh. Not at all. It's all behind us now, Patches. We're friends. Anti-clockwise metamorphosis. Love that. Ew. This Patches. Spider. And we oh we opened the linkage between the first floor and second floor of the lecture hall. It's just that easy, Nobo. Nobo, listening to you through the stream. Ooh. Yay, nobody, we get to walk through the big nightmare portal into the into the second of our nightmares. Um, so what you're wearing reminds me so much of um I haven't read Mistborn, but I know there's a thing called Mist Cloaks. Um Why the heck do I s I'm listening to myself. I need to stop listening to the stream because just hearing your I own voice. I hate listening to myself. I'm gonna like throw up. Like the I, way I, I pronounce I, things is disgusting. It's so interesting that almost everyone hates listening to themselves. I don't know what it is because like I hear myself speak and I'm like this is fine, but then I hear myself speaking like, th like through. I don't know. What I, do you know what I mean? When I hear myself speak with my own ears, it's fine. Yeah, yeah. yeah. In my head. You don't notice until it's played back in a recording. And they're like. <laughs> Um, uh, oh yeah, so we have to deal with the Giga Frenzy brain. Every time, every time we are out from cover, it'll give us the frenzy. You remember this? You remember the Giga Frenzy brain? Yeah. Good morning to you too, Rowdy. I hope your day is going good so far, Rowdy. I don't know whether or not it's it's just begun. I imagine you've been awake for a while. Oh, here, I'll, uh, I'm sending you a screenshot of the missed quote, Cobra. Because you're going to see it, you're going to go, oh, yeah, that, that, I see that. Oh, that's just like you, for real. Hold on, gotta check my DMs real fast. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I see it, I see it. Yeah. 
So, like, when I see you running around like that, I was like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> Mistborn re reference in Bloodborne? <laughs> Wait. Mistborn? Blood? Of oh, my God. Oh, how is Mistborn spelled? Um. Oh, you know what? There's no E at the end. My bad. My bad. Yeah. That's what I thought. Yeah, yeah my bad. My bad. Just completely unrelated. Yeah, that's what I thought. It couldn't possibly be inspired by Mistborn. I mean, it me it it literally means bloodborn. It means like a, a, it means like something that is transmitted through blood, and the game is all about things being carried through blood, like the <laughs> curse of beasthood, um, strength. It's about like uh, how strength is carried through blood. So the the theme mm -hmm. is blood and how and how blood does things. Blood. The blood, which is why it's called Bloodborne, because it's about being mm -hmm. transmitted through blood. And the game's all about the blood. Nobody but blood. Mm -hmm. You love blood. We love blood here, don't we, chat? I have to go to the night. I like that the nightmare headstone is a headstone that's been split open and it's like flesh on the inside. Hmm. Maybe, I, maybe you know what? I, I think Brandon Sanderson might like Mist. Dang the the puzzle game series Mist with a Y. Yeah. Yes. That's exactly what I was talking about. It's the only Mist I know of. S M H my. Yeah. Because like Mistborn, and then also um, like the Shard Blades turn into Mist. You got kind of a Mist kink going on. <laughs> You're getting kinky in the mist. I should not be bleeding myself when I'm getting frenzied. <laughs> I'm using my my big sword. Oh. <laughs> You hate frenzy. You can see all, all the dead bodies here have all, all of those like insanity javelins stuck into them. Mm-hmm. The madness nobody. So yeah, as long as you're within the eyesight of the the brain of Mensis, you just get a bunch of frenzy. Well, the brain of Mincis also gives us the best blood echo rune in the game. And also, you. Uh, it's actually a nice brain. Which is what makes it such a bummer, nobody. The brain is nice. It doesn't mean to give us the frenzy. It's just incomprehensible, Nobo. And Not also. This we, area you're in right now? Oh. Oh, the brain up there in the tower that's glowing. It's like chained up there, hanging in a bell tower instead of a oh. bell. It's just a brain. Man, talk about getting brain, am I right? <laughs> that bro's nasty. Oh, you, when enemies get frenzies, they start like rapidly losing health. They don't like take a big chunk. You can just see that their health bar starts draining really, really, really fast. So enemies can get frenzy. There's not an in-game way to inflict frenzy as a player. You have to rely on enemies to do that. Or like the brain. Ha what I'm saying is you have to get brain, Nobo. Mm -hmm. That's the real, that's the secret. You have to get brain. Alright. Cool. Got bouldered. Got bouldered it for my whole no. health bar. That's how it is. Is the delay still huge on stream? No, it was just that one stream. Yeah, probably all the technical, probably all the technical issues. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> Beefed beyond belief, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. I should just run past the giants, if I'm being honest. They're not worth the souls. The blood echo. I feel so sacrilegious. Oh, I forgot that my health drains rapidly. Been exposed to the frenzy as well. All I got out of this was get brained and bouldered. So true, ready? Getting brained and bouldered. 
Sounds like a good good night to me. Wow, I got Thank through that whole area without getting a lot of frenzy at all. Okay, good. My echoes are still on the ground. Just wait. I'm just gonna make straight for the the Giga Spider Room. Did you see the Giga Spider Room last time? Um. No question. That's okay. I'll show it to you. We get to enjoy the Giga Spider Room together. Okay. Behold. The Giga Spider Room. Oh, that's fun. It's it kind of aesthetic. It makes my skin crawl so oh, really? so I hate it. And they all fall down as you try to run through the room. Oh, the big spider's the most annoying because its limbs are so damn long. Uh, but you can just leave. You don't have to fight any of them. You have to fight the little, you have to clear out the little ones, maybe. Yeah, because they'll chase you. Hate hate it there though. There's some items in there, but uh, they're not worth uh, having to look at the spiders. Where's Fluffy? We could pet them. They are fluffy. Can see that the frame rate on the big spider. Look at look at how far its arms yeah, reach. It Oh. Oh. It's I hate it. The big one doesn't respond. Maybe I should kill it to save. What the hell? Oh, it's it's activated Giga Flail mode. It's, it's so Hi Macy. The Elden Ring ants are uh, the creepiest. Yeah, the Elden Ring ants suck. Okay, I'm them. looking them up. They're just and their asses get juicier and fatter until they Ew. become and you can like pop their ass. Yeah. And they're full of like weird blue goo. Ain't that just ain't that just the the bee's knees, Nepo? I'm just gonna unload my gun. I'm just gonna shoot the Evelyn until I kill it. What? I looked up Elden Ring Ant, and there's like a bunch of sacks. There's like this like... Yeah, those are the ants. That's their butt. Uh, the spider hair... Spider yeah. hair is not fluffy. It's like straw-y. Yeah, I've heard. I've heard it's like weird, pokey straw. Fluffy. It's not good to touch. Do one pet. How is that not a parry? So there's an NPC hunter here. Uh-huh. Just shot him until I got a free parry. <laughs> he's re he's really weak. <laughs> he's not a challenge at all at this point in the game. I don't know why he's here. Um, let's see. There's an elevator we need to lower around here. There's a bunch of funny uh, little bitty people who are dressed as weird gesture jesters. They're around. Beware of treasure. Nothing but traps here. <gasps> oh no. There's no trap. <laughs> I like those. I'm glad there are no mimics in this game. Also, uh, have you seen these like little growths on the walls? These like little like orbs. Those little spiders? Yeah, they're little eyeball spiders. That have Aww. like needles through them. Oh. Oh, look at these little guys. Gone too soon. Where are they going? The brain of Minsis is killing something. Whenever it glows, it's doing... It's doing some business. But I have, I have no idea what it could be brain blasting right now. Actually, do I need to go down with the elevator to open a doorway? I might. Let me go check. Don't want to bother opening the shortcut elevator only to have the door at the bottom be like a one-way door that's blocked. It's a short elevator too, so it's no. It's just okay. There's no door at all. Cool. I always forget. I like that the elevator goes so fast that the camera can't keep up. I find that very funny. What is the brain blasting right now? Must be one of the enemies that I like. I like led all the way around the area. 
So the, these these little armored dudes, they're pretty chill. They're pretty chill about everything. Um, uh, directly to the point that like you get to this staircase, and they kind of they these two get angry with you. They get rather cross. They're like, we're gonna beat beat this hunter lady up. Grandma will go no further. Uh, but they don't. I, they they should know that they're actually little wimps. They're little wimpy, 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 wimpy boozers. They're weak, nobody. They're weak. Okay. They're no match for me. Oh. Um. I think we're directly below the brain of Mincis right now. Ow. Uh, so this, I just got some fast poison from this enemy, and it is this game's version of bleed. I don't know why it's called fast, fast poison. It's it's just bleed mechanic, where if the bar fills up, you take a big percentile chunk of your health. More eyeball. The eyeball spiders are just everywhere. You know, gotta have eyes on the inside. Nobody. That felt like watching armored chicken get slaughtered. Not gonna lie, says Rody. Bestie, what are you talking about? I don't know. I don't know what is Rowdy talking about right now? Go over here. That was crunchy. It actually, it actually picked, it was loud enough to pick up. It was, it was very loud and extremely crunchy. It's a crisp. What is that? It's me peeling a sticker off of something. Oh. <laughs> you can hear it so clearly. Uh oh, gee. <laughs> Rowdy said that felt like watching armored children get slaughtered. <laughs> but I misread it. It's chicken, and I didn't. I didn't double check your work. <laughs> uh, so now there, there are birds. There are now birds with dog heads and dogs with bird heads. You know how be. Oh, that's lovely. Gonna send the the kinky cage down. It's another shortcut. And my text to speech can read the messages. Doesn't mean I can read the messages correctly. <laughs> <laughs> chicken? Why? <laughs> Armored chicken. And I was like, what is that a reference to? And this whole time, Rowdy's like, what are these people talking about? My bad, Rowdy. My bad. Yo, my B. My B, Roro. Our collective B. Fair enough. Free, tri uh, free trial text to speech. <laughs> You're chilling. <laughs> we have to. You remember, you remember the the uh, funny funny book man who runs away? Do you remember him? Uh, actually, do I have any poison knives on me? I got nine. No. Oh. He decided to weave. So you you've seen me do Mikalash before, right? A lot of people find this boss very difficult, uh, because they don't understand that he will just run away from you in whatever direction you approach him from. Uh, so you, you the idea is you need to chase him into an arena with no exit, so that he will actually fight you instead of just running away more. Oh, I've got him stuck in a nightmare loop, nobody. Uh, he doesn't love being poisoned, I'm starting to gather. What's, what's going on with him? He's gone. <laughs> oh, his health is being damaged. That was an ineffective poisoning. Ooh. 
Oh, and then he fakes his own death. He's like, oh no, I died, Hunter. Now, now he's gonna he's gonna moan into the mic, nobody. I hope you're ready for that. Oh, I gotta turn it up. I don't think he'll, he'll start. I accidentally skipped some of the moaning because I was picking up the moon room. <laughs> oh my god, my typing is so loud on your stream. <laughs> <laughs> Resounding and powerful. <laughs> Now. Uh, so this this section of running is a little harder because now he he's got a bunch of funny mirrors that he can warp into. If you if you chase him, he'll he'll hop into his magic mirror and reappear elsewhere, like a little itch. The idea is you need to trap him in this boss room. So now I'm going to chase him and he's going to, I think, jump through his magic mirror again? Which is a shame, it's really not what I want. Oh, he just teleported away. You get a melee swing on him, he'll just, he'll just teleport away. And chase him all the way up. That works too. This works for me just fine. Just shoot him a little bit, soften him up. <laughs> this boss fight is very stupid. Uh, so now that I'm above him, he won't teleport away, and I can—I I think I can just shoot him for oh, his shut health up. bar. What are you doing? Oh my gosh! I didn't look. I was. <laughs> I didn't look at the screen. I didn't realize what you were doing. <laughs> Did you not see when he was like teleporting back and forth, shimmying no. earlier? <laughs> oh my gosh. I mean, what I'm actually supposed to do is is drop down and make him go the other way so that he'll run into the boss room. I'll show you, I'll, I'll just actually do it. Jump down, he runs into the boss room and then he closes a big fuck off gate. And he's like, you can't get me, but I can. I just have to go all the way up. And at the top of the arena, there's a hole, and you drop down into the arena with him, and he actually becomes a dangerous real boss fight. Uh, he continues to do his funny tentacle arm, but he also casts a call beyond, and it'll kill me instantly, so. That was a loud phone notification. Oh my god, he almost called beyond to me. No, please don't call beyond. Dodged it. It's just that, it's just that simple chat. Go. So he, he's he's said that when he wakes up, he's gonna forget all of his cool new nightmare knowledge. Also, he gives us his funny cage hat. Uh, but the problem is, is that his his real body is a desiccated mummy. So uh, I don't think he's waking up either. <laughs> he's. Yeah, the bridge goes up. We get it. Put on the funny cage hat. Let's <laughs> lock a granny up. Uh, she's not kissing anybody. Uh, like that her little nose is poking out through the cage. Her monocle. Beautiful. Truly, truly beautiful. Uh, let's see. We need. We'll, we'll need a. There's a, a a locked door inside the boss room that you need a special key for. We're not getting the special keys like on the other side. So we're gonna have to explore across the bridge uh, to the PvP lamp. Uh, this is where all the PvP happens, is in this area. I think it would be funny if I did not kill the bell ringing woman. That way we had a chance of getting invaded. I think that'd be kind of quirked up of me, Nova.
Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the huge pause. And then, uh, uh, yeah. And in your head, you're like, who gives a shit? <laughs> who cares? <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> wow, nobody. Such harsh words. <sighs> uh, all right, nobody. Are you ready for uh, the worst uh, section of gameplay in the game? We have to cross a bridge with like five winter lanterns on it. It's going to be pretty hellish. Also, I think I just got an infant in a jar. That's cool. Okay. Good news. I can kill a winter lantern before they grab me if I get the jump on them. So we're heading towards the the brain. Congrats on the collab, nobody? Ooh, you doing a collab with someone? Thank you, AC. Yeah, that's what I've been like typing and blah 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 blah. blah. I'll show you the video. Um, who are you collabing with? You know the person who made that art that I was cosplaying. Yes. <gasps> you they art were, collab. They love. They 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 loved my cosplay so much. They wanted to make a video with me of like them holding the art, and then the art comes to life, and it's me. Um, I'll send you the video. You can see it. We hate Winter Lanterns! I hate Winter Lanterns! I hate Winter Lanterns! It's coming. <laughs> it's me Everything is fine. I, I'm fine. I'm fine, personally. Everything is, is cool, nobody. I'm, I'm relaxed. I'm unbothered. I'm in my element. Me talking to nobody. <laughs> <laughs> ah, okay, I got frenzied a lot, but you know what, nobody? We made it. And now we'll never have to worry about winter lanterns ever again. That's my funniest joke yet. There's a, another winter lantern we have to deal with in this area, and it's by far the most annoying. And now there are more spiders, but this time they have human faces. They have the faces of what looks like monks, maybe scholars on them. They got bowl cuts, that's for damn sure. So that's cool. That's where the squads, the, the squatting up happened? Oh, I see. Yes. That is where the squatting up happened. Terminal squatting up center. That's what I was filming yesterday. Oh. Nobody, I'm gonna drop the funny brain into the big hole. Okay. Here it goes. Bye bye, funny brain. There it goes, nobody into the infinite blackness. Lost forever. Just kidding, we're gonna have to go down and say hi to it. Oh shit, we have to do Upper Cathedral Ward to say hi to the brain. Nobody, we don't have brain-to-brain -brain communication. Ow, sedative. Winter Lanterns have, like, the most potent frenzy. Oh, she's waiting for me. This bitch. <laughs> this fucking bitch. Oh, she thinks she's all this and that. <laughs> Walk her brainy ass somewhere else so I can cross this. So I can cross the rafters of the spider room and hide behind this tiny rock. I gotta ambush her. She's got eyes all over her head. She can see me from any angle, nobody. She's rushing me! She's rushing me for the grab attack. I can feel it in her soul. Do it, coward. No! <laughs> no! Cross the bridge again! No, do it! No! Yo, she. Oh, whoa! She's not on you! No, 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 no! I She's got some fucking now. hate the winter brains! This sucks shit! <laughs> this mechanic fucking sucks! <laughs> I have to cross the fucking bridge again! No! 
That's why we don't like winter uh, lanterns. If they grab you, even if you, if they, fr they'll, cause they'll frenzy you mid grab and then the frenzy buildup will pop a second frenzy whenever you get out of their grab, which is an, which is basically immediate death. That's why we hate winter lanterns. They're so difficult. <laughs> and they have one and only one attack and it's the grab attack. That's the only attack a Winter Lantern has. And they run really fast. <laughs> and it's not like you can ignore them, because if you just run past them, the Frenzy will kill you. And they have a bunch of hyper armor on their grab attack as well. So even if like you, you like see the grab attack coming, and it's got a huge hitbox. Gotta, it's gotta it's like you can tr you can dodge out of it and you'll just get sucked right back into the grab which is like what happened with me there so i'm just gonna run past thank you god me. that's rude i imagine the winter brands are like covered in viscera so i imagine they they are pretty stinky and and it's just that easy to slip past really possible and like the frenzy meter fills up super super fast near them so it's like it's tough to take a sedative to not get your frenzy popped you have to take it like the moment you start getting frenzy build up oh you know what it's be i also have 93 fucking insight which makes frenzy build up faster oh and she has my souls you bitch so uh the more uh the more frenzy, or the more insight you have, the faster your frenzy builds up, because you got the madness in you. Oh, almost died there. I'm just, I'm, I'm literally just shooting her to death with my gun. I go back to work. Have good work, Gorberson. Spider. These are not. These aren't even man spiders. Come on. The frenzy builder didn't stop, so I just got popped. Like she, I wasn't even looking at her for like over five seconds, but the frenzy just keeps ticking up. It's so annoying. <laughs> Frenzy's an interesting mechanics. The winter lanterns are just like too good at applying frenzy. <laughs> Shit, but I'm but if I get 99 insight, nobody, I can buy a blood rock. I I, I want the blood rock though. Whatever. Let's go do Upper Cathedral Ward. Frick winter lanterns. All my homies hate winter lanterns. We're going to we're going back to Cathedral Ward. We're gonna have to go back up to the big workshop tower, to where we got the Radiant Sword Hunter badge, because at the top of that tower is Upper Cathedral Ward, secret area, containing secret bosses, very scary, very cool. You know what I'm saying, Nobo? Yeah. Nobody loves <laughs> nobody loves secret scary bosses. Don't gee, don't I? I can't wait for you to do the secret areas in Dark Souls 3. Mm. Oh, you're getting a little message. I just there's a lot going on right now. <laughs> there's a lot going on. <laughs> there's so much going on right now. Because like she posted the video and people are following me and people blah 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 blah. I want to see the video. I DM'd, I DM'd you the video. Hold on. Watch it on stream, question mark? <laughs> Actually, I'll, I won't watch it on stream because they're just going to hear it with no context. Yeah. I don't want to share our Discord DMs. All of our dark secrets, nobody. <laughs> Revealed to the public. They'll know about all of the scandals, TM. <laughs> the nobody scandal. Oh my goodness. So controversial. Open the upper cathedral. 
High upper cathedral ward. Immediately there is the, the giga babies. So you know it's bad up here. There's the weird eldritch babies. And there's uh there's some more of these these church dudes. And these are very strong church dudes. They're, they're the churchiest dudes. They read their Bible. They go to like the Wednesday church service, you know the weird one? They go to church and read their Bible. Bible. Lamp. So there's gonna be two bosses up here, the celestial emissaries and uh and Ebrietus, daughter of the cosmos. This is where all the space things are. You can see all, all the flesh babies are gathering to look out over the bridge. They have like weird like tentacle suckers for faces. They have like tiny little wings. Damn, it's like a pit bull at an orphanage over here. Just kidding, pit bulls are very sweet baby dogs. What is with the stereotype of like pit bulls eating children? Um. Uh. Well, I know, yeah. I know about the news stories, but it's not, pit bulls aren't actually predisposed no, to being pit, violent. No, pit bulls, pit bulls are just like other dogs. They just happen to like. They just happen to be have been like physically stronger, but that doesn't mean that they're like rabid. So what happened is they were they were bred because they were bred for of pit like fighting. their jaws and everything. They were bred for they pit were fighting. bred for that. So and then a lot of the, their of... owners ended up being very abusive, which is why a lot of pit bulls are yes. very violent. But but right. you could if you like get a baby pit bull and raise it, it's just a normal dog. It won't like go around. Yes. Some people talk children. about like because of the way they've been bred, even if you do get a puppy, like. You kind of have to install new morals into the dog because, like, <laughs> well, the dogs don't have but... <laughs> dogs don't dogs don't come out the pussy with morals. Nobody, <laughs> they aren't like they don't come out the pussy being like I They're fucking love Joe Biden. <laughs> 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 nobody, we got our choir uniform on. We're role playing as EJ now. Let's go. We're walk up to get this item and then out of the window suddenly. While we're walking away, <gasps> a werewolf uh, with blue eyes. So we've seen like red-eyed enemies, but the werewolves here have like blue eyes. Kind of weird. Uh, this is the uh, is one of the best bloodstone farming areas in the game because it has a bunch of these werewolves, and the blue-eyed werewolves have a really high drop chance for uh, for those tasty, tasty, um, tasty. Just deliciously tasty chunks that we really love and adore. You know, they, they're playing on the chandelier and they break it. And everyone's like, oh, my sh my nice chandelier. And you walk back into a tiny doorway they can't get through and just poke them through it. See, I'm fighting with them through the doorway. <laughs> Ow. Fighting them through the walls. Ah. The flail move, Nobo. He hit me with the flail move. Ow. There you go. It's just that easy, Nova. Twin. They actually drop all different denominations of bloodstone, which is nice. So you can get, you can, you can farm an entire. Oh, different stuff. denominations. Yeah. We got the Baptists. We got the Baptists. Yeah, we usually. have the Latter Day Saints over here. Right, or some Orthodox. Right. Mm, mm, wow, that's so interesting. Are you being sarcastic right now? And uh, then of course no. there's a little brain sucker. Do you think someone has a kink for getting their brain sucked out? Oh, that's super oh, kink. Oh, yeah. Yeah. 
I, I, I like, I, by the time I finished saying it, I remember that I, I've seen that, like, exact kink before. And I was like, oh, never mind. Take backsies on that. Got him. Bloodstone shard. You know what's nice about Elden Ring? Uh, they programmed in a, a unique number of moves for weapons. So, like, in, like, Dark Souls 3 in Bloodborne, if you just keep mashing R1, you'll loop back to your first attack and just attack R1 forever. But in Bloodborne, you'll actually finish a, a combo of light attacks and you won't be able to do more. It's like you can only swing four times in a row before you have to take a pause. I like it. It doesn't matter much for PvE when you're, like, fighting bosses and stuff. Because you just you can just keep spamming R1 anyways, but it makes a, a big difference for uh, for fighting other players. Uh, do, have you seen that the brain suckers can use their can have magic powers? Huh? Have you seen the brain suckers magic? They they can no. like they like shoot a, a spell that will like hold you in place so they can get in there and you know tie you in place so they can suck you dry. I don't want to get sucked, nobody. I'm saving myself for the lore. You can see, like, this one over here is casting his evil spells at me. Mm -hmm. Brain suckers are terrifying. I got the orphanage key. Let's go. You ready to go to the orphanage, nobody? Yes. I'm sure everything will be normal at the orphanage. Uh, but first we have to hang out with uh, my man. He's posted up. And he teaches you the gesture, make contact. Best gesture in the game. If you stand here for like a minute, you'll rotate your arms and switch sides on the L that you're holding. And you can use it to communicate with, with eldritch beings like the brain of Minsis. So we're going to have to make contact with the brain. That's how you get the, the highest moon rune. I should have the moon rune on right now. Because I have two of them. I should, I should, I should go back to, to good old, good old, whatever. I'm about to open up a shortcut to the lamp. So I'm just going to go back and... and uh, change up. I have a bunch of item discovery runes that I, I was using to farm because uh, I put a bunch of cursed gems on my on my shikage. It's one of the things I was doing when I was messing around. I got a bunch of cursed tempered blood gems and they give me like crazy high damage. Uh, but in, they're cursed so they have debuffs. So I took 21.5% attack up, 78 attack, 22% attack up, 7.5 attack, and I took damage versus kin which is like Kin are like the weird aliens, and then I took damage versus beasts down, 10% each. But like 40% damage up versus 10% damage down feels like a that feels like a net damage up on everything, you know? Mm-hmm. So that's what that's what I'm talking about. Nobo dab me up. The curse is randomized as well. You can get a curse that decreases your health. So you get like a health drain curse. That one's pretty, pretty freaky. I'm gonna do blood rapture for the visceral attacks, and I'm gonna do the hunter of hunters rune, which gives me stamina recovery speed up, and also lets me join the covenant. So the secret runes are covenants, and you can just equip them, like an inventory slot, like you can in Dark Souls Three. This was the first game where you could actively just change what your covenant was. And in, in the all the older Souls games, like Dark Souls 2 and 1, you had to like visit a special person to change your to change your um to change your your covenant. Uh, but not in this game. In this one you can just do it. It's really nice. You have to come back to the workshop to do it. And then in Dark Souls 3, you can just switch out I'm pretty sure you can just switch out the inventory item for covenant on the fly. Which is cool. Alright, time to go to the orphanage, Nobo. Aren't you excited? Woo! Hell yeah, gamer. 
We're all so excited to go to the orphanage. Oh, you, you know how it is. One of the little guys is out. Tuck him into bed real quick. Here we go. Here we are, nobody. We're at the orphanage. And for the boss fight of this era, you have to beat the shit out of some orphans. Hell yeah. Orphans? Yes, these are celestial emissaries. They're not actually orphans. They are weird aliens from beyond oh. the pale, Nobody. I wanted sad little kids with no. Brain. Hold on, these orphans are getting way bigger. <laughs> that orphan's big as fuck, y'all. <laughs> Ma'am, I think there's something fucked up with your kid. <laughs> the, the kid's about to sprout a bunch of face tentacles and start casting magical spells. There we go. Uh, easy boss. Got the communion rune. And now we can uh, break some glass. We've busted. You can see down there, there's the cathedral I fought by Amelia. So we're about, we're just above the church. And here's the best spell in the game. A call beyond. It looks like a weird, I'm going to show off what a call beyond looks like. Look, there's the Augur of Ebrietus, which is like a weird slug, and then there's a call beyond, which is like a cosmic ultra slug. Also, I'm getting my cheeks clapped by some aliens out here. This is not how the the Area 50 I was supposed to clap alien cheeks in the Area 51 raid. Now the aliens are clapping my cheeks. How could this happen? Uh, and now that we're done with the first boss fight, nobody, it's time to do another boss fight. Are you ready for another boss fight? go uh, I hope I can first try this because otherwise it's gonna be it's it's easy when you can first try Ebrietus because she, you get a little extra damage on her we are at the altar of despair as one does and there's a there's a great old one down here she's praying uh, the altar of despair looks like a looks like a stone version of Rom the vacuous spider the Epriotus' gooey orb face right here. Oh, I no, I don't actually get any bonus damage. I just instantly broke her face. Let's go! Let's go. Free repost. Love that for me. Anyways, it's time to attempt to get behind her. That's where her, her funny slug tail is where she's weakest. And by weakest, I mean you just do a normal amount of damage, but she can't really hit you. I'm breaking all of her limbs. I'm crippling her. Let's go, Pog. Uh, she's at. Let's go. She's at half health, which means uh, she's about to start uh, ringing. Is she an orphan? Uh, yes. She was abandoned here. And she was discovered by the healing church. So far, you could get the orphans. I love crippling orphans in video games. <laughs> uh, so her, her, the ringing noise around her is slowly draining my health, which is very cool of her. I almost got her. This is one of is supposed to be one of the harder boss fights in the game. Uh, but once you like, once you know how to like cheese her AI really bad, you can you can beat her in your first try. Because people, people get very scared of Big Ebrietas, and they stay at a middle distance, and that's where her enormous tentacles are strongest. We did it, nobody. We, we, killed, a, we killed a god. Let's a little go. baby god who doesn't know anything because she was left here when she was st still a baby. Well, we killed her ass. Sent her to our real god, Jesus. <laughs> Level of endurance again. Yep, 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 yep. Thank you, thank you, funny doll lady. Actually, I want to go see how much, how much juice we can pull out of out of the cum dungeon now. That now that we have two moons, soon to get the third moon. I want to see. We were getting like eighty five k before. They were gonna get a lot more.
Let's see. Let's see the money. Show me the money. A hundred and ten K. Eighty K to hundred and ten. That's pretty good, I'd say. I feel like that's a that's a pretty good bump, wouldn't you say? And yes. Now we ha now we have the 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 thing that'll just talk with the brain. I think that gave us more than the boss fight we just did. <laughs> I think doing one run has given us more than Ebriotus's whole health bar. So that's cool. I've just started like instinctively. I need to just make this the last run and spend all this cash that I'm earning. Also, I got 99 insight. Let's go. Now I feel like I need to do the DLC so I can unlock the blood rock. Actually, maybe I could just spend it all. Cause like, do I need more blood rocks? I'm gonna get, I only need one for my weapon and one for my gun and I'm gonna get two. Like, does it matter? What am I gonna even do? We're gonna beat the game and that's it for Granny Annie, you know? <laughs> Granny Annie. Uh, should I, what should I put points into? I guess skill. It's our lowest. <laughs> it's gonna say strength, but I'm like, when am I gonna use a different weapon? Never. Oh man, if only I could use saw cleaver. <laughs> oh my gosh. No, who needs it? I'm gonna spend 99 inside on whatever they got in the shop. What's going on here, lads? Nothing? Y'all ain't got shit? Damn. So true. They have nothing of worth. They're worthless pieces of garbage. Uh, let's see, I got nine left. There we go. Zero insight. I see nothing. Whenever I come back, the doll will be a normal doll. Oh yeah, the less insight you have, the more beasthood you can obtain as well. So beasthood and frenzy are, are inverse. Well... Oh, hold on. There's someone I need to merc in Cathedral Ward. I could send him to uh, Castle Canehurst, and once he... <laughs> what, you you ripping ass over there? <laughs> no. I ripped, like, a candy straw in the package, and it was really... <laughs> yeah, I, I know. I know. I just wanted to bully you. <laughs> I'm still, like, I'm still, like, smoking with Beasthood after getting rid of 99 Insight. <laughs> it's fine. I guess you want to have like super low insight. Oh wow, because I have zero insight, even the, the enemies that are supposed to be insight enhanced, like the enemies down here, are just normal. And they don't have the buff on their scythe? I'm cheating right now. Uh, hold on. He's not even this way. So there's a guy that you can send to Castle Canehurst, and the, you know the queen that we met whose blood I drank and became a vile blood? Right. Um, he'll, she's in, immortal. If you try to hurt her, she'll just, she just grows back. Uh, and so uh, the guy I send up there will bludgeon her until she's nothing but a little pile of pulp. Literally, like the entire room will just be coated in her blood. I Actually, he gives you a gesture. Maybe I'll do that. I'm not sure what was, Grandma. Now she's gonna she's gonna go off and get her her fanny clapped. By that I mean she's gonna get uh, beaten to death. Actually, maybe he will be up here. Cause a after nighttime he's supposed to go. He has a, a a different resting position over here. Also, when it gets later at night, you know those big giants with the big axes and stuff who are around here. Yeah. They get eep they get eepy. They're sweet. They're Aww. sleeping. Just a bunch of sleepy, sleepy little guys. He's just so e Look at how eepy he is. But if you get close, they'll wake up. And you kill him. That's it. Alfred, you here? There he is. There's Alfred. You're Hi, Alfred. Take this. Gives you some fire paper. He's he, he's pretty chill, except for that he's secretly like a psychopath. 
give him the unopened summon, and he's like, this is so epic, and then he gives you the Wheel Hunter badge. Uh, which I wanted, because it lets you get a giant conical golden hat. Whoa. You get a giant gold cone for your head. I'm going to put that on Granny Annie, turn her into Pyramid Head. This is just like Silent Hill 2, nobody. This Whoa. game truly... Silent Hill 2 is truly just blood... Wait, no. Oh, the, the horror lady is gone, and you know what that means, no blood. Oh, no. Also, the doll is just now a doll again. She's not alive because we don't have any insight. Wait, are you serious? Yeah, if you have no... When you don't, when you, you have, have no insight, she, she's, she's just, just a doll? doll? Well, she's still a doll when she's alive, but she's just right. a doll. Do you start the game with no insight? Yes. In fact, when you first die and come to this area, you see you can't even use the doll to level up. That's so interesting. I'm going to use a bunch of... Also, look at what the blood dregs look like. They're the things I've been collecting off of NPCs as I kill them as part of the Vile Blood Covenant. Looks like little blood sperm. Oh. The gold Ardeo. Also, you can get the, the wheel. I, I can't even use it. Why bother? You can get the Ligarius wheel. Uh, which is a w weapon that is quite literally a giant ass wheel. No jokes, no puns. Mm -hmm. It's literally a giant. I've seen it. I've you seen can spin it, it and yeah. then a bunch of dead souls will like flock to it and they'll be like, oh, you know, why am I bothering wasting? I'm just going to go come and then I'll have all the money I need, you know? Yeah, I, I, I feel that. <laughs> you crack yourself up with that <laughs> joke, Novo? Yes. Bust you up, Bestie? <laughs> yeah, busted me up, alright. <laughs> I love you, Bestie, but you're the worst person I know, SMH. <laughs> I can't even blame you for that. Oh, don't mind what you just heard on stream. I totally wasn't buying cookie clicker upgrades. Oh, wait, oh, no. I I need to go check I just my doubled my quicker. shipments of potters. I'm making 1.7 billion cookie billion cookies a second. How do you? I don't understand how you breach the million to billion gap so quickly. Oh, did you get any big upgrades when you reset this time? I got the 10 10 percent cookie Ooh, multiplier. You know what? Thing. That's probably what's doing it. How has that been helping yeah. out? Here's the hunter chief. I think it's point. been helping out pretty good. You're supposed to buy this to open the gate to get to the. To get to the cathedral, to get up to Vicar Amelia, but I just skipped that whole bit of the game. Gold Ardeo. Now we can wear the the true church executioner garb. Where is that Gold Ardeo? Look at me, Nobo. I'm looking, I'm looking. You have a cone on your head. Mm-hmm, 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 mm-hmm. Very nice. Is this the gold hat you were speaking yep. of? Gold cone. Big gold cone on your head. And now we're gonna go we're gonna go see what, what Mr uh what 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 our boy was doing after we gave him the unopened summons. I'm sure every I'm sure when he got to the Castle Canehurst, he was very normal. He was very normal about everything. I'm at 1.8 billion cookies a second, almost at two. Almost doubled my billion. I wasn't, and I was at, uh, I was at like 700 million this morning. I know. I know. Huh? What? I know. <laughs> so he's like covered in her viscera, by the way. Ooh. 
So his master is Master Ligarius, the the man with the scythe on who we fought on the rooftop. And he's mm-hmm. he, he was real angry that his his master decided to be to stay behind to keep this lady sealed away. And now he's turned her into a large sticky goo. You can take her queenly flesh. Oh. And you can actually bring her back to life. But he's like, now I've done it. And he gives you the roar emote. And now I'm going to kill him. Mm. He's like, you're jealous of me and my, my poggers killing. He's actually rather strong. But, but luckily, his moves are weak. Did he just take Lead Elixir? Fuck. <laughs> uh, lead Elixir turns your your skin into basically lead, so now my weapon is bouncing off of him. Oh. He spun the wheel up into its magic form. Not wheel scary. The wheel is actually... I should do a run where I use the wheel. Mm-hmm. It's such a weird weapon. It's easy to get because you just have to kill his ass. Radiance. Uh, so normally he'll go back to... Um, he'll go back to where you first find him by the church. And he will kill himself uh, by immolating himself in front of a stature of Master Ligarius. And you'll pick up the Radiance rune off of his, his corpse. Um, interesting mechanic about Bloodborne, uh, when you summon NPC cooperators, they actually have mm-hmm. allegiances to whatever covenant they're in. So if you are a vile blood and you summon someone with radiance, you can actually fight them. Which means that it's possible to do PvP uh, inside the Hunter's Dream. Uh... Yeah, yeah. And if you summon two phantoms and one is vile blood and the other is radiance, they can fight each other. They can also help you, but but they will do damage if they hit each other. I just think that that's cool. I think that's neat. It's a lot of effort for an obscure an obscure little thing like that, but I think it's empty. Uh, so to bring her back to life, we need to go to the Altar of Despair. And from the Altar of Despair, if we go up to that Corpse of Brahm and we hold up the Queenly Flesh, uh, we will actually bring her back to life. I was getting your mom's Queenly fre- Flesh last night. Oh, my mom is a queen, so... Time okay, flows sorry. in reverse for this scrap of flesh. Pretty sure you, you lose it as well. Yeah, you lose the queenly scrap, the clean, queenly flesh. Uh, and now, when we go back to Castle Canehurst, we'll find that the queen is alive again, undoing all of his hard work. And he, he and even if you do the quest line correctly without killing him, he'll he'll be dead before he even knows that you brought her back. Cause he'll kill himself. Isn't that poggers? Yeah. Actually, I don't even think he burns himself. He, like, stabs himself, and then he burns with, like, holy white fire. So, I mean, I don't know. It's She's back. Oh, you can't even talk to her. You have to kneel. She'll be upset with you if you talk to her directly. I'm going to give her all of these blood dregs. She, I think she's going to give me an emo. She's going to give me some, some tainted blood. <laughs> Deep respect. Let's go. I don't actually know what co- the covenant rewards other than that gesture. Because you get the respect, which is like the cooler form of bowing when you first join. Mm-hmm. I'm gonna show it off. Uh, you get. Oh, I picked the wrong one like a freaking fool. You get respect, which is just like a deep bow. And you get deep respect, which is like the one where you actually go down onto one knee, like you do when you're standing in front of her, and you can just hold it forever until you decide to stop doing it. You have to like do a dodge input to stop bowing. Pretty cool. We did it, nobody. We got the PvP rewards without fighting any actual other players. 
Let's go. Let's go. Um. Okay, so we need we have to cross the bridge to get the funny blood rock. And there's a magic item there that I want to collect, like... I don't know. For the sake of completionism, I want to collect it. Um, we should we should commune with the... We should get some brain, I think. Me and you. Besties. Woo! You want to go get some brain, Nobo? Yeah. What level am I now? Oh, I'm, I'm starting to get past PvP level. So if, if we do get invaded anywhere, it's going to be right here. And they're going to be very strong. We're about to get the one... Uh, there's only one blood rock in the base game. So you can only... In the base game, you can only get one weapon to plus ten. You only get one titanite slab, if you will. Hmm. Shit, I'll just go grab the rock first. I was gonna I was gonna go talk I was gonna go talk to the brain, but I'm here, I'm queer. I was gonna go get the rock. Of course to get the rock we're gonna have to pass all of the scary ladies and their and their respective braining. Which will be fun for us. Uh, also having more insight increases the percentile damage of frenzy, so you see I'm actually not taking as much damage from it. So that's uh, good for me. Excuse me, man. As you can see, there's, you know, even if you run away, Frenzy will still get you. I don't even care about killing the Winter Lanterns. I just want the item that one is guarding. That one across the rafters. That vexes me so. Oh, my, my Blood Echoes are still here inside of the spider. All pathetic 1,000 of them. Like, she, she she looked at me once, and it's going to fill my whole frenzy bar. Whoa. Just escaped. You can actually see that some gear has better frenzy resist than others. The crow feather garb actually has a bunch, especially the mask. It has, the like, some of the best frenzy resist in the whole game. Because it had the beak is filled with a bunch of nice-smelling herbs. I've lured her out into the rafters. Don't know what to do with that, honestly. Maybe now I can get around her. I think so. I think that was a good bait. Open the chest quickly. I think it's technically possible to dodge a frenzy proc, but it's like frame perfect. Get the choir belt. It's the item we wanted. Now we can leave and we don't have to ever deal with her again. Then now that is actually unironically the last winter lantern we will have to bother with. So now there's a bunch of items. If you come down here without dropping the brain, the brain will be here and will bust you up. Get a bunch of great ones wisdoms here. Uh, it's like a you remember what the madman's knowledge looked like with like the skull that had like the the it had a, a shape coming out of it that looked a bit like a slug. You used it to get insight. Mm. Now we're getting Great One's Wisdom. And this skull is really exploding with a bunch of cosmic knowledge. And it has like, mm. it, the shapes look like a bunch of little slugs. Yeah. For some reason, uh, Eldritch Deities really like slug motifs. Not, it's not even <laughs> slugs, it's like like little ocean isopods that are kind of like slugs. Yeah. Little weird little creatures. Little, little, little freaky creatures. Little snails. We love snails here. Can't even open the shortcut. Because we don't have the funny key. We just don't have the funny key, nobody. Uh, but luckily, we don't even want to take the shortcut. We want to go to where the brain used to be. Drop down. Okay. Because down here in the brain chamber... Someone just tried to jump down there. That's instant death. Is the blood rock... A large, solid chunk that forms in cold blood. Crystallize is called a bloodstone. It is no mere chunk, it is nearly a boulder. 
A few bloodstones of such size have ever been discovered, even considering the combined experience of all the hunters. It's the plus 10 item. Now we can take our Chicago all the way. And plus, it also puts us right here uh, onto the, the place we need to be to go talk go talk some brain with the brain. You know what I'm saying? Wink. <laughs> I'm glad you find find the, these antics amusing, nobody. <laughs> now there's a, there's a new elevator here. We can take the elevator down into the abyssal blackness beyond reality. That's cool. I hope you weren't uh, expecting there to be stuff down here. There's just nothing. Mm. You can, like, see where the world ends above you, too. If you walk out into this darkness, you may come across... <gasps> See, the brain is here now. Its eyeballs follow us as we walk around it. Looking. Looking. Whoa. Us. The, um. The brain is nice. Might not like, might not like that. And, uh, wait, no, I don't mean to wave to him. Say hi. Say, give him a little hello. And you need to make contact. Hmm. Yeah, I don't think I like that. Do you not like that you can hear it beating like a heart very gently in the background? Oh, I don't even have that volume on. Oh, you can you can very distantly hear it beating like a heart. Yeah, you can hear it. It has like a very slow and steady heartbeat. But the brain is nice. It's a nice brain. Sure, it's a little goopy, and it has like a weird hand umbilical cord, but there, there's nothing wrong with that. It's just hanging out here. It's not its fault that it drives the those who look at it insane with frenzy. Hmm. Maximum moon. Uh, and in order to do all the bosses in the game, we will have to unfortunately kill our beloved brain. And it ain't easy either. Brain is dummy thick with health. Has a huge health bar, bigger than a lot of end game bosses. Though. But brain doesn't attack. No, because the brain is friendly. Uh, the, I think the moon rune says as much that uh, the the this this being is uh, what was contacted to create the nightmare of Mensis. Sort of. Um, so this is the, the thing that is responsible. And it's it wants to be helpful. The Great Ones, the Eldritch Gods of this world, are interesting. In that the Elder Gods are not actually, like, hostile, like they are in H.P. Lovecraft lore and a lot of other sort of Eldritch horror. A lot of times the Great Old Ones... These big incomprehensible horrors like want to like enslave humanity or destroy the world. But the great ones uh in Bloodborne are actually they're actually helpful. They want to help, but they just, you know. They don't understand how. Most of them generally are helpful. But we had to kill him to get the living string. The immense brain that Mensis retrieved from the nightmare was indeed lined with eyes on the inside, which means it has true insight into the reality. But they were of an evil sort, and the brain itself was terribly rotten. But even still, it was a legitimate great one, and left a relic, a living relic, at that, which is a precious thing indeed. then I believe now they will sell Living String for 10 Insight, just in case you use the first one, uh, summoning or doing a Chalice Ritual. Uh, there's a secret boss in the last Chalice Dungeon that you need Living String in order to get to. Let's see. It's time to finish Murgo's Loft. We've done enough faffing about nobody. It's time we, it's time we actually, it's time we we do it. It's time we. It's mm. time we get down bad atrocious. You know. Mm. We'll finally. We'll finally end the long blood night, Nobo. 
All we have to do is oh, kill wow. a baby. Amazing. Amazing. So you, the shadows of Yarnum are now normal enemies. They don't get any snake powers here, though, which is nice. Uh, this is the best farming route in the game before the cum dungeon was discovered. But now that now that the cum dungeon is here, you know, why do anything yeah. else? It's better. It's so true. You're doing the entire route of this area, which involves killing most of the enemies, uh, only gets you like 40k per run, unbuffed. Uh, but doing one cum dungeon run is 80k base. So, you know, it's it's no comparison. And this is how I used to level to 120, is I would go and I'd fist all the pigs. The pigs have like a thousand eyeballs now on their face. Oh. So that's good for them. We'll see one of the pigs before we finish the area. Oh. Here's the bell ringing woman. She's trying to summon an invader. We'll, we'll leave her alone, because I think it will be fun if we get an invasion. I'm rusty, though, at my Bloodborne PvP and that I've not really done it in years. We did one PvP match, I think. Maybe two on our last playthrough. So I don't I don't have a bunch of confidence that I'll, I'll be able to win, but it'll always be fun. You know, it's not about winning nobody. It's about having fun and playing your best out there, you know? You just get out on that field. You fist some pigs. And you have fun. Yeah, here there will be a pig on our, on the right hand side over here that you can see. There, there they are. Do you see them with their like thousand eyes on their front end? Look at them. Um. The pig, he's here. And you can see that the the shadows are fighting the pig. Got him. They got the pig. But they just have like a bunch of unbleaking eyes on their front. But here's the pregger lady again. Uh, apparently she's the one that gave birth to the great old one baby that we're hunting. And at the top of the nightmare is another Yasefka's blood vial. I don't know what the lore implications of that shit is. But there's some of Yasefka's blood out here. So it's nice. It's a nice healing item to have. So we're gonna we're gonna go up. We're gonna find the baby, Novo. You know how babies are. The baby, let's go. <laughs> this is gonna be a little cutscene. We're gonna get to enjoy. I'm gonna throw a hard pivot at the game in a second. Well, for stream, it's gonna be a hard pivot. Oh, what's this, Nobo? Ooh, very scary. This is Mirko's wet nurse. And you can see it's playing that music box lullaby called Mirko's lullaby. The music box that uh, we got in Central Yarnum actually plays little snippets of this song. It's the, this whole boss fight's theme is just played on an actual music box. I wonder if they made the music box digitally or if they actually made a real music box. I, I actually want a music box that plays Murgo's Lullaby, but like it's impossible to find one. I don't think anyone makes them. Mm -hmm. I would have to learn how to build music boxes. Uh, phase two, uh, Murgo creates a bunch of darkness and her weapons get all glowy and powerful and she starts summoning shadow clones of herself, but I'm just gonna kill her. You can see the game will hesitate for a long time. Baby crying. And now the baby shuts up. Shh, shut up. The baby is quiet now. We did it. Mm. Nightmare slain. <laughs> so every other time we kill a, a boss, it says uh, prey slaughtered. But this is one of uh, three boss fights in the whole game in which victory will net you the text nightmare slain. We did it, nobody. Mm.
We Thank saved you. the city, and now the hunter's dream is on fire. No. Well, the night of the hunt is coming to an end, so the hunter's dream is collapsing as well. The hunter's dream <laughs> is inside is its its own nightmare. So there's like the nightmare frontier. Oh. There was the nightmare of Mensis, and the hunter's dream is a nightmare too. Uh, if you keep talking to old man, uh, if you keep talking to old man, not Gascoigne. If you keep talking to, uh, oh my God, what is his name? The the old man in the wheelchair in the hunter's dream. Of uh, you, eventually right, you can yeah. find him sleeping out in the garden. I just got a point of insight because I found the lady. So she's given birth to one of those weird, freaky babies that we saw in Upper Cathedral Ward. And so she's down here in the basement. And if I poke the baby, she will die. And we get one third of an umbilical cord and we get her shoes. We did it, nobody. Amazing. I'm going to go time travel. <laughs> oh, actually, let's go see if grandma's dead. And then we can time travel, having successfully completed basically every NPC storyline in the game. And then maybe we'll just kill everyone else for sport. Yep, there she is. Walked outside, got her ass beat, and all she got was one sedative. Oops, sorry, Grandma. Yeah, and the Blood Saint lady is going a little crazy. Kill her real fast. Not for corpse will get a rune. The lying man. Kill him and we get some pungent blood cocktails. You're killing everyone. They're, they mean nothing to me anymore. Uh, and now I can see that I've scared the sweet, sweet man. He is in fear of his life. And I just returned to the hunter's dream. Their storylines are over, nobody. Their lives hold no meaning to me. Okay. Also, we have insight, so the doll is back. Let's go! Yay! Yay! Are we having fun, everyone? Why did I level up blood tinge? So Fucking so stupid of me. <sighs> now we need to go to the Grand Cathedral and time travel. So the whole time we've been in the Blood Moon... Uh, everything's really expensive. All the items are expensive. But now we're going to rewind time and go back to night. <laughs> and now it's night. <laughs> We've successfully reversed Amazing. time. Let's go outside and see the results. <laughs> we did it. All the prices have been reduced. Look, the sky's not purple anymore. It's just a nice, normal night. And the, the big dudes are sleeping. Wow, it's like all, all the back half events of the game didn't happen. Isn't that so cool? Wow. Uh, it, uh, other fun... The amygdalas are still revealed, of course. Even though we don't have the insight to see them anymore. Maybe when I reload the area, that'll change. I wonder, I, I should go take a peek at your Hargul and see whether or not its sky is hard-coded to be... Also, he's not scared anymore. Oh, how did this happen? A beast. A beast. It's my fault. My fault. Savage gods. Savage gods. Uh, so he's sad. Uh, by killing everyone, you get the same... Also, the the ground is now... There's a blood trail, by the way, from where the, the horror lady went you can like see like blood as she went down to the mm. and follow her trail to see where she gave birth uh, but uh if you invite the beast here he'll eat everybody one by one and then you'll get that you'll get that oh. same dialogue there's like how could this have happened a beast got in and ate everyone he feels robusted he feels robusted <laughs> up about it oh you can actually see that the the sky around the hunter's dream is starting to like lighten almost like it's becoming day I still see the moon out though see what else was to be done we've time traveled we've done all the stories i think it is it just the boss i feel like there's one other thing i wanted to do oh well 
Uh, now it's time for us to consume some umbilical cords. As is the way of the world. We need to consume at least three to get one full umbilical cord and get some eyes on the inside. I'm going to go for all four, just for fun. It doesn't do anything special, it just need three. And now we're going to go fight the last boss of the game. Last two bosses, actually. Good old German. That's his name. You can find German in the garden having a, a nightmare, because he's been here for so long. So now he offers to free you from the dream if you will submit your life. And if you refuse, if you refuse to, to wake up from the dream and go back to a normal life. Dear, oh dear, dear. what was it? What was it? A hunt? A hunt? The blood? The blood? Or the horrible dream? Horrible dream. You stand up, Nobo. Oh, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. <laughs> Oh no, it's my worst nightmare. He uses my one of the coolest weapons he uses the burial blade. It always comes down oh, are you gonna fight him? Yeah. It's so sick. Uh, he is German. Damn it, joins that. He is German, the first hunter. He was the first, and then he became part of the dream, and he acts as a guide to all of the hunter, the dreams hunters who pass through. How he got here, we'll soon discover. So he is supposed to be the final boss of Bloodborne. You can accept his offer, and then the game will end, and you'll wake up in Yarnum. Mm -hmm. But if you fight him, he is the last boss. He's actually not as easy as you might think, considering some of the other bosses that we've done that are optional. Unlike Ebrietus, we can't really get in and cheese him. Luckily, his gun doesn't do a lot of damage. And he is fast. He's very fast. There we go. I'm trying to get my parry timings for him back in my head. He 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 is a he's a great little duel. And then he goes into a second phase. He begins glowing. Oh, shit. He he does a he has a special uh, shot that will parry you even if you're not like attacking. If it hits you, it'll knock you off balance and he'll rush in. And then he does this move. is just a giant explosion and it powers him up. He'll begin moving faster. He, should, he even will begin uh, flashing back and forth when he dodges like he had used an old hunter's bone but because he, he actually is an old hunter he doesn't have to use a magic item like we do. He just does that. He tries to hook me in. He has old hunter's bones. He's got bones. those old hunter bones inside of his body so he can just, he can just teleport like that. Uh, inside the scythe mode, I actually think he's a little bit easier to handle. Uh, not because his attacks... He, he hurts a lot more. There we go. But he's a little more... He's got some wind-up moves that you can carry. And now we find out why he's here. We get the old hunter badge. And because we consumed three umbilical cords, our ending is going to be a little different here. So now a god has come down from the sky. This is the moon presence. It's the god of the moon. It's supposedly responsible for all hunts because it rules over the moon and the moon and the night are what makes the beasts happen. And he will lure us in and try to embrace us. The way that he grabbed Granny Annie. But you can see that we, we pushed him away uh, if you don't have three umbilical cords, he'll grab you and uh, the game will end and you'll end up in the wheelchair where German was, pressed into service by this oh. elder god. But if you have umbilical cords, you will get a chance to fight the moon god, which we're not going to do. 
we're gonna leave. Because Berman dropped for us the old Hunter's Badge, and this game, unlike uh, future Souls games, does not have an option to not enter New Game Plus. When we fight the Moon Presence, that's it. We will immediately go to New Game Plus, which is why it's the last boss we will do. All right. But I'm going to go look at all the old Hunter stuff, because we can get the Burial Blade. A masterpiece that defined the entire array of weapons crafted at the workshop. Its blade just forged with ciderite, said to have fallen from heaven. German surely saw the hunt as a dirge of farewell, wishing only that his prey might rest in peace, never to awaken to another harrowing nightmare. And then you also get German's armor. You get his armor set. So I'm gonna I'm gonna do a quick come run. Actually, let's let's get our, our new come rune. Blood for the blood rune. Yeah, now we have the the two best moon runes. We could have the the smallest denomination also, but I'm gonna leave on the visceral echo heal. I love the visceral attack heal rune. It's like one of my favorites. There's nothing better than parrying someone and healing back a bunch of your health on the parry. It's it's very strong. You can use it to heal in boss fights that you get parries in. You can use it to aggressively do a trade parry, so like wait for the enemy to actually hit you and parry them as they hit you. Because you can just rush in. Doing the visceral attack will restore all of your rally health, and then the actual visceral attack with the rune will give you a bunch more. I think that should be enough for everything. One run. I'll do a second run, just in case. Now we're getting 130k from every run. It gets... Nobo number get big. Bloodborne clicker Ooh. over here. Did you hear me clicking? Uh, no. I was just making a joke about numbers getting bigger and just passively farming stuff over and over again. No, I literally just opened a cookie clicker and started clicking. You said that, and I was like, what We're gonna the do a heck? cookie clicker, a cursed cookie clicker stream. As my next stream. You ever think about that? You ever think about the consequences of your actions? No. So, uh, I lied to you. This is not a Shikage run. This is a Burial Blade run. <laughs> this is the right. only way to get the weapon, though. So now we need a bunch of upgrade materials to level up. Because it's it's it is a high skill weapon. It's it's like scales on skill and arcane. And of course I have no arcane. But luckily it's primarily a skill weapon. We need one more chunk. You may have cleverly noticed that I did not level up anything else. Also, actually it's only 60 insight for a blood rock. Damn, it's cheap out here. Plus nine, plus ten. Max upgraded burial blade. Is the burial blade the best weapon in the game? No. Is it my favorite weapon? Yes. Let's go. Cursed temper twenty-two. Ah, that's another. That's a double kin down. I don't want that. Do I have to actually go manually unequip my other? I have to. You have to manually unequip runes to see them in the menu again. You can't just auto equip them. Get my cur my giga curse on here. There we go. Bum, 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 bum. I could make I could give myself an E in blood tinge scaling for no reason. Cursed tempering damp. Weapon durability down fifty four. Attack down. Physical attack up, attack down, negative arcane attack. I don't even know what the fuck that does. Um, this one's just a buff. Attack versus beasts down, though. Mm. Ah. <laughs> Scared me, Nobu! <laughs> Burial blade plus 10. And we also have German set. Now we can look like the old man we just killed. Isn't that so poggers? amazing. We, after we murked that stupid old man, now we can be the old man we always wanted to be. Hell yeah. So, the burial blade's a big-ass curved sword that you hold in Let's one hand. Let's go, Granny Annie! Yo, she rocks it has that the, thing. The, it has the, the singing uh, rolling attacks. 
Uh, and it has a, a really cool, like, downward heavy. And then you charge it for a big swipe. And my favorite thing is when you transform it, flips out into a huge scythe. Very cool. And since you're two-handing it, you even... You get a, a free a singing attack as your L2. It actually has like a whole combo, like a whole three hit combo of like special heavy attacks where you like you stab down and then you like swing it around. And it has great transforming attacks too. Where like you swing it out. I love it. I love this weapon. Is it a good is it a good weapon? No. <laughs> this is actually a pretty mid weapon. It's good for PvE. Um, it's not considered a great pick for PvP though. Uh, but that the difference between a good pick for PvE and a bad pick for PvE is like one more swing per health bar. You maybe can't one-shot people with a fully charged heavy attack with this weapon like you can do if you have like a busted build with uh, a Shikage. But it has more range. Like even my one-handed attacks have more range than my sword did. Because this thing is fucking huge. Love this thing. Uh, I am gonna go. I'm gonna do. I'm gonna do a couple dungeon come dungeon runs because I need to start leveling up my arcane stat. My skill is already up there. It's actually quite nice that my skill is so... That my blood tinge is high, because it means my pistol is going to stay really strong. I don't think there's a way to even rescale. You can't, like... In Dark Souls 3, you can go talk to the, the slug lady and she'll respec your stats. But not in this game. I don't think there's a way to respec. You just get what levels you get. Also, interesting thing about Bloodborne which carried on to Dark Souls, is that every level actually raises your defense stats. It raises your physical defense a little bit. And armor doesn't make a huge impact on your actual physical defenses. It does make a noticeable impact, but it's not, you know, between, like, the worst armor and the best armor, it's not much of a difference. Uh, but your level actually makes a huge impact on your defense stat. So a lot of the, if you go to a super end game area early, everything will one shot you. But if you come back when you're a high level, it actually is, is fairly manageable. And it's all the only thing that changes is your level, which I like. Plus the whole no equip rate thing is pretty great. We love no equip, equip rate. You know how like in, uh, you're having to like manage your weight in Dark Souls Novo? Mm -hmm. uh, you don't have to manage weight ever in Bloodborne. Because nothing has any weight, so the, the game just doesn't bother. Oh, I went too early and I lost all my echoes, nobody. I'm a freak. Oh no, it still counted. LMAO. Grandma got a scythe, y'all. What she doing? Oh, actually, I'm a fool. I do actually have to wait longer. I'm very silly, Nobo. I'm such. I'm so silly. <laughs> yeah. Okay. That's a good timing for it. All right. I thought. It, I thought it was. I was still getting it because the. Whenever I load into a new area, the the souls tracker goes up. You need to watch some of Yimfa's uh, run-throughs of Bloodborne. Because some of them are actually wild. Interesting. The most interesting one, I think it was... I don't remember what the challenge was. I think it was gun only, maybe? Um, they, did, they, did, they do a glitch in the DLC where, like, you double kill a, a boss. And it gives you, like... It gives you enough blood echoes if you do the glitch correctly to, like, level up almost all of your stats to 99 immediately. It, like, it fills up the whole fucking bar that holds the number for blood echoes immediately. It gives you, like, billions, unironically. 
a cool glitch that. Can you imagine if I hadn't biffed it and I had I had gotten access to a moon rune early? How how far along our level could have been? Because I could use the the moon rune to help speed up how fast we were getting black goes. Could have been a higher level. You can use it to like power level to 120 immediately. Uh, let's see. We've done that, we've done that. We're ready for moon presence, which means you know what time it is, Novo. It's time for the DLC. Pretty sure, pretty sure it's DLC time. Means we gotta go back to the gr No, that was the wrong, oh no. I went to the wrong lamp. Oh no. I'm EP. You just woke up? You're EP? I woke Yeah, I'm EP. I you know you're gonna go I take think over. I'm gonna go and make some food. Oh. And then lay oh. down. Okay. I'll see you soon then. Okay, bye bye, bye, bye. EP Nobo. <laughs> Truly, she is EP. Anyway, now that she's gone, it's time to game. And by game, I mean just walk to the actual place that I meant to go, but accidentally biffed the input for. This guy thinks his scythe is cool. My scythe is better. It goes shing. Love you, Nobo. I have good food. Tell me what you make. Grandma stock in the streets for real. <laughs> now that everybody, I'm so glad that everyone's dead, y'all. So glad. All right, scoop me up, big guy. I picked up the DLC item, right? Otherwise, this is just gonna hurt me. Oh, he's actually invisible again. Let's go! We know, we saw the DLC cutscenes last time we played the game. We saw, we saw. You all saw. We don't need to talk about it. You all saw, you were all there. Maybe I should do challenge runs of Bloodborne. I, you know what? After, we, after so many years of playing Bloodborne, and once we run out of... Once we run out of cool, interesting builds to try, we'll do challenge runs where, like, we only use one item or something. Or, like, we do, like, a gun-only run or something. But that's after we run out of, like, all the interesting weapons to do runs with. Maybe then... I don't know. Maybe then there'll be enough people in the community that I could do, like, a poll for it. Good old Old Hunter's DLC. This DLC is actually incredible. Like Blood, like Souls games have had a lot of good DLC. Like Dark Souls Three has pretty good DLC. Dark Souls Two has interesting DLC. Dark Souls One has good DLC. But this, I feel like, is like the best DLC they've ever done. It's just I don't know. It's really expansive, and it contains a bunch of content. Getting the old hunter armor. That's what we like to see. We're actually really strong for this area as well. Because you get this item, I think, like, right after you do Vicar Amelia. So you can come here really early when you're still getting, like, twin bloodstone shards. And these, like, these possessed hunters are really strong. So strong. But it's a great, like, as soon as you unlock it, you can run through here and you can pick up all these twin bloodstone shards and, like, level up your weapon quite quickly. I keep forgetting to abuse that now that I have my my empowered dash attacks are actually really strong. And I should use them a lot. Like one-shotting enemies strong. Like that's a two-shot on an enemy, but like 
If I just do my dash attack. It's almost a one shot. What if my my overhand head is? Oh, much it's more damage. Look at look at how they are afraid. Oh god, I forgot how much reach the heavy has. Maybe the heavy is just like a if you faint it, it becomes like a swipe and then a bunt. But if you charge it, you get this huge sweep that has like an absurd amount of range. I think it's, they're already showing off new weapons, by the way, these enemies. You can get the, this giant heavy whip they're using called the Beast Cutter. It's cool. Beast Cutter. The DLC weapons are all really cool. There's not a non-cool weapon in Bloodborne. Every single weapon is good, and they're all viable to endgame because they're all entirely unique. They're all super interesting. So this enemy has, I think it's called the Spiral Rifle. It shoots like a, like a weird spiraling bullet that pierces through enemies. Oh no, it's called the Piercing Rifle. It's a cool gun. I've never actually used any of the any of like the piercing rifles or stuff. Even in like a gun only runs, they aren't terribly useful. See there's a red-eyed hunter here. Ow. Oh, this enemy has a weapon called the boom hammer. Uh, and it's it's ostensibly in concept pretty cool. It's a hammer. And on the back of the hammer is like uh, like a gun hammer that you can like flick back to like ignite the hammer and then your next swing will be fiery. If it's a slam, the next if, if the hammer is primed, the next swing will explode. Hence why it's called the boom hammer. Uh, the problem is that the, the boom hammer does like terrible, it's a strength weapon and it does terrible damage. Here's the Beast Cutter. Beast Cutter is what we've been seeing. The enemy... I can't even use it. I don't have enough strength. They're not strong enough. A DLC has a lot of... It has it has a, a couple strength weapons. Because there weren't a lot of strength weapons in the base game. Uh, it has, it has uh, some really good skill weapons. And it has a couple extremely weird, very obscure, arcane weapons. The base game had a lot of blood tinge weapons, so they didn't really bother adding a lot of blood tinge weapons to the DLC. Instead, they focused on add adding some interesting strength weapons, a couple interesting skill weapons. And there's not a lot of arcane weapons in the game. Like, the weapon I'm using now has arcane scaling, but the arcane scaling only really plays into my dashing ciderite attacks. Is it ciderite? Is it called ciderite? Yeah, ciderite. Sounds like a Terraria or goes hard as fuck. I don't know, there's something about this scythe that's very cool and iconic. It's like one of my favorite video game scythes. Um, Otto, uh, I, I, I trapped my, my, my partner, uh, Otto, Otto Prime. You've maybe seen them on the channel and stuff before, they're my partner. And I, I, I gave them true despair when I started playing uh, Reaper in Final Fantasy XIV. Because the basic scythe that Reaper gets in Final Fantasy XIV looks a lot like the Burial Blade. Like it looks like a wooden pole that has like white wrappings on it and then like a sort of like chipped, very curved blade. So when I whenever I got like a bunch of really good Reaper equipment, I would always just use the default the default scythe as like my glamour for my reaper that was back before uh i i kind of got that's that's before i got really hooked on playing dragoon i did reaper for like all of uh for like the latter half of endwalker i played as a reaper and then after like the balance changes reaper became like the categorically lowest dps melee in all of final fantasy 14. I, 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 I put down the class, I didn't play it anymore. I haven't, I haven't played Reaper in so long in Final Fantasy XIV. Which is a shame, because Reaper is actually pretty fun to play. Uh, but it's just not very good. 
Pokemon. I much prefer Dragoon, actually. They're, I, I'm, I'm, one, they're, they're patching Paladin. Paladin is one of my favorite tanking jobs, but I just don't like playing it. Like, I like the sword and the shield aesthetic, and I like, like, the holy magic is cool, but Paladin just doesn't feel great to play. So I'm excited that they're reworking Paladin. I'm sure some Paladin mains are kind of upset that Paladin is getting a rework because they like how Paladin plays. Um, but they're reworking Dragoon, and they're reworking Paladin, and I'm really excited for both. Because I like Dragoon, I like the way Dragoon plays right now. I just, you know, I want them to make changes to it because a couple parts of the way Dra Dragoon plays in Final Fantasy XIV are kind of like sluggish and weird. Uh, like it has like, it has too many buffs that you use on yourself. It has too many buffs, like to the point where like to be a good Dragoon, you have to like use, you have to use three off global cooldown buffs in at, between pressing two global cooldowns so you have to press three buttons and in, in the two seconds between you pressing your normal attack button and your next normal attack button this old man is an explosive trap and he guards the boom hammer uh, i don't think i can use the boom hammer either nah strength boom hammer is interesting trash which is a shame because a lot of people are very excited about boom hammer but it's just not it's not terribly good at fighting enemies or at fighting other players. Really the best weapon in the... I, in, I know that it sounds like I'm doing a bit, but the best weapons in the games are the ones that have serrated edges. That's not even a bit. That's I can prove it statistically. Uh, the reason I like... One, I really like the Saw Cleaves, Cleaver's moveset. It's my favorite... It's my favorite moveset of any weapon in the game. It's very basic and simplistic. You just swipe back and forth, uh, but I, I find it very satisfying to use. Uh, the reason serrated weapons are the best is because there is a hidden buff to serrated weapons, and serrated weapons get a hidden damage bo bonus multiplier against beasts. And the more deformed and the stronger the beast, the stronger it becomes. Also, I'm dunking on this. This NPC is normally, like, really annoying to fight, but I'm just outranging him and dunking on him. Which feels very good. Because normally that guy's a pain in the ass to fight. So, like, let's see. Saw Cleaver. Bloodletting Teeth. Saw Spear has teeth. Beast Cutter, I think, has teeth that give it the serrated bonus. There's not many other weapons that have that. But it actually makes the Saw Cleaver one of the best weapons in the game. All the weapons are good, and they're all viable. And you can use any weapon and get through the game more or less comfortably. You really just pick something that has a gimmick you think is cool, or has a move set that you really enjoy, and it'll it'll make the whole experience of Bloodborne start to finish feel great because you have like your cool, your cool ass transforming signature weapon. In a way that you just you just kind of don't get in the other Souls games. You get cool weapons, but they never feel like... You never feel like you're using a really unique weapon. Like, you use a longsword, a longsword's a longsword's a longsword. Whether you're using, like, the Frost one or the, the simple one nobody uses, which I actually really like, by the way. I, I've, I've done what nobody's done in Dark Souls 3 where I do the whole game using just a longsword that I get to plus 10. Because the longsword's moveset's just really nice, and it's simple, it's versatile... You know, you're never going to find yourself in a situation in which the longsword does not have a moveset you can use, you know? You can do big swipes to hit enemies. Uh, you can do thrusts to poke enemies who have a lot of armor or might be resistant to slashing. You have, like, the heavy pokes. You can two-hand it to get some better damage in, in a different moveset that's also quite nice. The two-handed moveset's also nice for, for uh, the longsword. But, like... Even if you get, like, a cool boss weapon, it'll just have the longsword moveset most of the time. A lot of times boss weapons will have unique power moves that you can do, but a, a lot of it tends to blend together. But in Bloodborne, every single weapon is its own... is functionally its own playstyle. They all have their own... Not only do they, they all have their own gimmicks, but they also all have their own uh, techniques. 
So like the the scythe is very long range. You sweep out at enemies with it, and you can bait them into like your charge and get a bunch of reach and swipe at things. And you can keep them at a distance and still do good damage. And the sock lever is about rushing in and just and just cutting things down to size. There's a lot of weapons that do that, but the sock lever does it in a very in a very rhythmic way where like you go in and you get like a good rhythm of swings and transform attacks and every every part of the sock keeper's move set sort of it all rubs together so it feels like it's it's trans a lot of weapons like with the burial blade it's transformed and it's untransformed states are are basically two entirely separate weapons it, it feels like two different weapons but the sock lever folded in its normal state and unfolded in its extended state feel like they are an extension of the same weapon and so the two flow into each other and like it, it I suppose it also follows from how you can like chain together your uh, your transforming attacks with that weapon uh, this enemy is annoying because they are spamming the minigun making it really hard for me to actually uh, fight them legitimately uh, this is the minigun hunter. They're uh, very annoying. Because they aren't actually that hard a hunter. They just, you know, unlimited bullets in a minigun. Makes for a bit of a dire fight. And he doesn't have the range advantage on me because burial blade. I'm just letting him beat on me, trying to spam a heavy attack. I could have killed him there if I wasn't so cocky. You just gotta get in an R1, you know? Just spam, lol. He actually drops the Gatling gun, I'm pretty sure. Uh, like the cannon, the Gatling gun is a, is a weapon you can just hold in your offhand. Uh, and it takes a bunch of blood bullets, and then you just spray it like crazy. It's like every one blood bullet turns into like 10 shots with that thing. It's not very strong, but it is very interesting. If you can't see what's going on, don't worry. I can barely tell where I'm going either. I just know the layout of this area by heart. I'm following the, the trails of blood on the ground. The little blood river will lead me where I need to go. Gotta clear these enemies out because there's another weapon in here. Don't know why I'm bothering to pick it up. These runs are going to start having to get faster. I'm going to stop doing... I'm going to stop coming into the funny blood cave to fight a bunch of enemies. There's a blood-starved beast in here. It's just like the boss fight we all know and love. Hold on, I'm gonna go back to my curved sword. Actually, I'm not parrying. Let me switch to my torch so you can see a little better. I'm gonna start doing the runs faster and not doing all the side content every time. As much as I love doing the side content. These runs are meant to be little yearly speedy catch-ups of the game rather than extended runs. If I want to do like a really long extended playthrough, uh, I'll probably start up my own save file. Just because I know that, you know, we want to do the bosses on stream and do the cool stuff, see the cool stuff. So this is the amygdala arm. It's the arm of a tiny baby amygdala. It's a strength weapon. You use it like a giant club. And when you transform it, the little, the like desiccated skeletal arm comes alive. And you can like, it'll like swing out as you swing your club. It's pretty cool. You can also see I'm absolutely drenched in blood. I really like this, this first DLC area. It's like a remix of a lot of the areas of Yarnan. It's Yarnan with a twist. The, the twist is blood. Whoa, that had a lot of hyper armor on it. Good old Siderite. Don't let them get their special attack off. Just kill them instantly, lol. That that that, that down swing L2, this move, feels good. Feels good that move. It hits really hard. Oops. Also, if we come up here, some armor. I gotta boil down Bloodborne to a science, you know? 
How else are you going to enjoy your video game? Oh, good old Simon. I like Simon's, Simon's like, armor. The, like, the beggar armor that he's got. Oh, nightmares are fascinating. We love Simon. He's cool. He's a cool dude. And his weapon is cool also. We'll have to do a, a run with Simon's weapon eventually. Uh, here, I'll kill him. So we can get his weapon. Uh, his weapon is a, a blowing curved sword that folds out into a bow. It's awesome. It is a legitimately awesome weapon. And you can see that he doesn't even have an off-handed gun. The NPC doesn't, because he just has the bow. But he's not too scary, luckily. The bow is dangerous, but only in the right hands. We get Simon's bow blade. Uh, Simon's blow bow blade is cool as fuck. It's primarily a blood tinge weapon as well. Uh, it's it's as it says. It's a interesting curved sword with a. It's got an odd flowing, very far reaching move set as you lean forward into your swings. Uh, it has an interesting spin heavy, um, and it transforms into a bow. And your attacks now shoot the bow. And then your 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 L2, what used to be your gun button, now does like a little swipe with the arrow. The bow actually has a really good scaling, and you can use it to basically make a projectile build out of just the just the just the bow. Is that heavy? Does a lot of damage when used as a projectile weapon. So Simon's bow blade, super interesting. Super cool weapon. Uh, but I did ruin his quest line by killing him. But whatever. So like even then, unupgraded, it's doing like a hundred damage, which is pretty damn good. Oh, I've attracted a whole lot more of these ticks than I meant to. Ow. Slow poisoning, really? Rude, for real. Alright, there's an armor piece behind these three, so this is kind of annoying. Actually, I think they're, they're guarding part of the constable set, and I actually quite enjoy the constable set. The set. Man, the heavy attack on the scythe is so good for fighting enemies. I think I'm going to stay as German for the rest of our playthrough. I'm going to stay as the German set with the scythe. But... Cool set, the constable set. Especially the top is great. that old horn's gonna fall that attack up. Now, I feel like I was talking about Final Fantasy XIV and I lost track of what I was, what I was, what was going on and everything. I to play some more Final Fantasy XIV today. It's been too long since I logged on. It's been like a couple days. But well, there's the whirly gig saw over there. I have to do a bunch of parkour and walking around to different areas to actually get to it though. The last set of the constable's armor is over here. The helmet you have to earn through a covenant that got added in the DLC. Uh, let's take a little peek. Constable set looks really cool. I like it. 
to drop back down and climb the ladder again. We're going to get another DLC weapon. Which is right down over here. Beast Hunter Scythe. Uh, it's the weapon this enemy is using, actually. It's, uh, it's a skill weapon. It's a, a sort of curved blade. Its default state is unfolded into a, a sort of a pole-held curved sword like that. and has these wide, sweeping swings. Uh, and then when folded down to its transformed state, Beast Hunter's Scythe becomes a super fast, rushing weapon where you do incredibly quick thrusts with it. Uh, show it off, actually, if I have the stats for the weapon. So Beast Hunter Scythe's default state is like this, folded out. And you do these big sweeping swings with it. Really good at catching multiple enemies at once. And of course it's heavy as this big overhead swing. It's uncharged heavy as a big swipe. Uh, I don't really like an unfolded Beast Hunter Scythe. It has great reach. And it has really broad sweeps to hit multiple enemies, but it's just very slow. And I feel like a lot of enemies will will hit you between attacks. Uh, but it can fold up and it becomes a rushdown weapon. Your normal light attack becomes this big, this huge, sort of like, almost like stinger where you rush and you swipe. And you do a bunch of fast swipes with the blade. And then the heavy is just a nice poke. And if you charge it, it's a big slam. It's a pretty versatile weapon. I tend to use it uh, folded up, though. It's good for doing bosses, uh, but because it is a clean a clean blade, it does not get the serrated bonus. Uh, and in my experience, uh, because it is a, a weapon in the vein of the saw cleaver and saw spear, you're better off using the saw cleaver. Unless you're going to like a really high skill build, then the beast hunter scythe will start to outdamage it. But if you're just doing like a normal playthrough where you balance your stats and you're like, oh, I'm going to put a little bit of my levels into strength and into skill and maybe drop some stats into arcane because you find like a magic item you want to use, you, you're, you're better off using a weapon like, uh, unless you really like the moveset, then you're, you'd be better off using whatever moveset you like. But for me, I always find that Saw Cleaver. Saw Cleaver is my favorite quality weapon. Because to use like use the burial blade like I'm doing right now, you need a lot of levels and skill. Because it's like it has like a B scaling in skill. It has crazy good scaling. Not quite as good as a weapon like the Shikage. I believe the Shikage has like S. It's one of the few weapons to have S scaling. If if I upgraded it to plus ten, you, I'd get S scaling in in blood tinge. But it's more of a blood tinge weapon than a skill weapon. And this, this is a skill weapon. You can see the shadow of a hunter ambushes you. I think that's cute and clever. Having like a shadow on a wall reveal that you're about to be ambushed by an enemy. It's a nice touch. It's a good X touch. Oof. It's almost impossible to interrupt those big hunters. Alright, we're going to drop down here. Kill some crows, you know how it is. Good ol' swing. More blood vials. Shell from the sky. With a slug lady in it. Whirly gig saw. I remember uh, our first playthrough, I said I would use the Whirly Gig Saw. Whirly Gig gets the serrated bonus, so big ups to the Whirly Gig. But I ended up sticking with the Saw Cleaver just because I'm not a big fan. I like the Whirly Gig, I think it's cool. But uh, when it came, I, I like being a little faster in combat than the Whirly Gig lets me be. Because it's a, it's a strength weapon, and it's got the chainsaw on it, but you do a lot of big swings with it that I didn't like. Why am I 1v1ing this dude? I should not fight him. The, these giant church enemies are are very difficult. Especially when like you reach about halfway health. 
the axe ones at least will like power themselves up something fierce. And they're terrifyingly strong. Four files, that's nice. Old lady who will scoop your eyeballs out if you don't kill her. And this guy who respawns every single time and drops just a bunch of blood vials. Uh, he's there because they knew a lot of people would get stuck on uh, this boss fight, this first DLC boss fight. So he's there to help you stock up on a bunch of blood vials so that you don't run out of healing items. Or at least that you never go into the boss fight totally empty-handed. Oh, we're going to see actually... Can I buff this weapon? I should be able to, right? No, actually. I guess Siderite weapons you can't. Because they have their, their arcane slashies. Alright, it's time for Ludwig the Accursed. First DLC boss. Pretty difficult boss fight, I would say. Uh, I might switch to the single-bladed mode, actually. Because I'm not going to need the range. I'm going to need the speed. I'm hoping to break his hind legs to get me some openings for attacks. My goal whenever fighting Ludwig the Accursed is to try and, and bottom him out to half health as quickly as I can. Because at half health he changes phases and becomes much more manageable. Otherwise you have to deal with uh, the jumping attack. And that, that jumping will almost always kill you if you're not ready for it. Luckily, I'm familiar enough with his moveset to, like, know what all of his attacks are and dodge most of them. Except for, like, that. Uh, his worst move is his charge and his flail and his jump. Those are his worst moves. You don't want those. Anything else is pretty manageable if you can get to the side of his hind legs, his hind horsey legs. Otherwise, he can be, he'll damage you really fast. Yeah, that little horse prance that he does is really annoying. This is a great move, actually. Because uh, it's really easy to dodge. You just walk around him. Oh. Broke the head. You know what that means. It means nothing, actually. Lol. Yes! Alright, half health. And then here comes Ludwig the Holy Blade. He has the Moonlight Sword. He's the coolest. Ow. Wanna, you want to stay in on Holy Blade. You don't want to go out. You want to stay in. A lot of people think, oh, I'm going to back away and get distance. No, 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 no. Stay in. Stay in, wait for him to finish a combo and an overhead to heal. Otherwise, he will he will kill you. Uh, I don't want to be in for this, actually. I want to dodge that. That, like, light of... That wave of moonlight will kill. It's a kill move. If you get caught in it, you'll almost certainly die. There we go, get another knockdown, and that's Ludwig. <laughs> He's really... Ludwig Holy Blade, when he pulls out the sword, is so scary, medium to long range. Because not only does he swing his sword in big arcing combos... Hello. Die. You can talk to his head here, but he will give you the Holy Moonlight Sword. Uh, one of my favorite weapons in the game. It's actually my second favorite weapon, both uh, visually and for gameplay reasons. If I'm not using the saw cleaver, I'm usually using the Holy Moonlight Sword. It's awesome. Holy Moonlight Sword is the coolest. I wish I could show it off, but I, I literally don't have the stats to even hold the thing. The well, first boss of the DLC done. Guy in here speaking poems. I like that this area shows you a bunch of items that you can't get. There's a lot of items in this hallway, in these jail cells, that you just can't get. You have to come back, like, I think close to the very end of the DLC to get the key that opens the doors in this hallway. It's interesting. I'm looking for a giant lady. There's a giant lady inside one of these that has a cool item. Here she is. Fist of Gratia. So this is Gratia. She is a, a hunter. And she's 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 a giant. And she found that guns were just too damn hard to use. Um, 
so instead, you, she just made a giant metal fist that will stagger enemies that you punch. Um, you can use it instead of a gun. You can just have a giant metal knuckle. It's pretty cool. Uh, so there's two NPC hunters up here we have to deal with, but first I'm going to go fight the, the glowing rats. I like that they just have this little area of darkness. And they, they signpost that there are enemies in it with their little glowing eyes. It's cool. It's it's a really striking sight. Get some poison knives, some, some chunks that we don't need because we've upgraded all our weapons. Get a Great One's Wisdom in here. And you can see that there's a lady in white praying at that altar. There's also a woman in black. With a, with a holy blade, a Ludwig's uh, holy blade right here, hiding in the shadows. The, the woman in white has gotten up, and these two are an interesting pair. Ooh, she parried my fucking heel. Uh, fun Bloodborne facts, you can parry people using blood vials. It's really, really hard to do, but you can do it. Uh, so their two gimmicks is that the woman in white will fire projectiles, and the woman in black will rush you down with uh, the Holy Blade. So they make a, they make a, they make an interesting combo where they sort of pressure you. It makes fighting one or the other hard, because you can't go fight Projectile Lady, despite the fact that she has less health because the Sword Woman will press you in, and you have to uh, space yourself out with the Projectile Woman while you're fighting the Sword Lady, or else she'll, you know blast you. Her projectiles don't hurt a bunch, but they hurt enough that it becomes annoying. Especially uh, because she will stun you with her projectiles and let the sword woman get in and crush you for a bunch of health. It's a really interesting NPC fight. It's difficult, and I feel like it's done a lot better than the Crow of Kanehurst. There's not a lot of bullshit uh, reading parries or anything. See, she does actually have a threaded cane, but she won't really use it. She doesn't have a lot of health either. She gets a couple swings in. They don't hurt very much. All of her danger comes from her eye. It's interesting that she continues to pray even whilst you fight her. You can like hear her praying. Doesn't even interrupt her flow. We stick an eye inside of a skull and now we're up here. It's an elevator. And there's actually a secret on the elevator that I want to go grab. And then I, then I think I'll end stream. After I show you a cool secret. Actually, I know how we'll end stream. It will have to do with the cool secret. You send the surgery altar up. And then this elevator comes up. And what's interesting about this elevator is that it won't go down if you just step on it in this state. You get Lawrence's Skull, which lets you access the hidden boss of the DLC. Instead, you have to pull on the elevator's lever and ride this platform down. Which will lead you to a little secret alcove with a chest and another lever in case you get stuck down here. Which will give you the church cannon. It doesn't do as much raw damage as the actual cannon. Uh, but it does consume less bullets to fire a cannonball than the normal cannon does. Which is where its appeal comes from. Alright. Now we need to do some backtracking. We're going to go back to where we saw that flaming cleric beast. That flaming cleric beast will react to us having Lawrence's skull. Um, it's not a great boss fight, but it is an interesting one. I found it I found it very, very difficult, actually, this boss fight. Um, it was the last boss fight I did to 100% the game. It was so uh, Lawrence was... Lawrence was the the boss I bought I fought to get the last PS5 achievement, or I guess PS4 achievement because it was PS4 when I got 100%. Oh, here's the eye scooping lady. She tries to scoop out your eyes.
I like that as long as you're past her aggro range, she will just immediately rush you down. Most aggressively. Like, no hesitation on her part. These enemies are actually kind of interesting, these big church giants. I just wish that the axe enemies, they give themselves like a really annoying debuff that I'm not sure how the game expects you to fight with. Like, they're manageable before they, they change. But once they transform, their weapon starts having an AoE on the end of it, and it starts creating AoEs wherever they swing, and it makes it so that you can't properly dodge their attacks. Which is why I always try to get behind them. Uh, because these enemies, like a lot of enemies in Bloodborne, you can chain backstab, so you can just backstab them over and over and over. Which is nice. Because fighting them head-on is... is Super perilous, super difficult. Wow, I'm so, I'm so covered in blood. There's like not a single inch of my character that is not absolutely drenched in blood. Soaked the bone out here. Why did everything respawn? Like a boar. Did I rest at a? Did I go back to the hunter's dream for some reason? Oh, it's, it's because I went up the, the surgery altar. It brought me to another area, which respawned all the enemies. Let's see. I'm going back to the church, which means I want to go this way. And I want to get back inside as soon as possible. I want to get away from these damn ticks. I hate them. Did you join all the guns so they don't bother me as I cross. Come back up to the church to where the flaming cleric beast was. So now we are going to get the chance to fight the flaming cleric beast. Do the ringy. Thank you. Uh, interesting note about Bloodborne and staircases. Staircases can sometimes make it uh, difficult to do backstabs and parries. Because if you're on different vertical levels, the game does not allow you to do backstabs and parries. So it can be dangerous. You'll parry someone on a staircase and then you won't be able to repost them. Anyways, now that we have Lawrence's skull... The flaming cleric beast that's like lounging on the altar will actually awaken and become very upset with us. Now, at first, it just looks like it's going to be like an interesting redo of. It looks like it's going to be cleric beast too, with flaming attacks. It's kind of cool, uh, but then they decide to to mix it up and be annoying as hell. So, pretty interesting boss fight. It's just Cleric Beast again, but got a couple different moves. You might notice that it's much harder, a lot more health than Cleric Beast. Leaving trails of fire behind it that are sort of like poking me a little bit. God, those Siderite moves do a lot. I need to spam them. Very strong. got these weird long reaching attacks that old cleric beast didn't have break another arm there we go i think i broke a leg and an arm and then you see it has these sort of like falling moves that it almost like falls over as it swings at you they're pretty interesting there it goes healing all its limbs again Ooh, that's gonna help me a lot actually getting that that visceral attack and and then it falls and its legs fall off and then it becomes this weird lumbering lava creature see the torso where its legs ripped off is bleeding lava everywhere and it will begin spraying pools of lava all over the ground 
in a, in a display I might best describe as being super annoying. You see, it's like trying to rush towards me, and its its swings are leaving these big fire pools uh, that hit me, even if I dodge them, which kind of sucks. If I'm being honest. It's making a big line of lava behind itself, which is lame. Vomiting lava everywhere. So now, like that whole area is going to be covered in lava for a little bit. You can see that it's hard to dodge around it because of the pools of fire it's charged leaves. Don't want to get caught on the wrong side of this lava or else I'm going to be just zoned out. I'm not going to be able to move. Trying to stay trying to stay towards its sides, but you can't be too far beside it or else you'll touch the lava pool at its waist. Ooh. Wow, that move has a lot of tracking. Get in here, get a few hits. Ow, touch the lava. The lava the lava that it's co that's coming out of its waist hurts a lot. Also see my weapon is taking a lot of it's not dealing nearly as much damage as it did in phase one. And that's Lawrence, the first Vicar. Annoying boss fight. It's not. It, it's it's interesting, especially a uh, a boss fight that is like a cleric beast but different. But it's just not done in the most interesting way. No one likes boss fights that have lava pools and a bunch of zoning attacks that prevent you from going to different parts of the arena. It's always kind of annoying. Hmm. Sorry, I'm answering a text message. Alrighty. So let's find someone to raid now that we've had a good three hour blood borning session. I would go for longer, but I don't know, I'm starting to get like a weird creak in my body. I wanna go get some lunch or something. Hmm. 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 Uh, any recommendations on who to raid? Uh, I have a, a someone playing Pokemon Scarlet and Vi Violet with just a couple, just a couple viewers. They have a really good setup, and 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 I, if I remember correctly, they're really nice. Uh, I first saw their their channel because they were doing like, uh, uh, rocksmith stuff. So like they were playing a guitar. Uh, and that was cool. I followed them. I don't have the, the same repertoire of very small channels like nobody has to just know who to raid. And I don't think any of our other friends are online. Hmm. <laughs> I think that might be our best option. I think that that might be a cool move of us. And there's just the twosies of us. So yeah. That's what we'll do. That's who we'll rate. All right. Let me get the channel name right. Let's see if I've done this correctly. Ah, there we go. All righty, friends. Uh, I'll play Bloodborne for sure more this week, probably on Thursday, though the time I'll have to do a little rain check because I'm not sure. I will have a good day. Thank you, Mesa. Uh, time that I'm playing Bloodborne might have to take a rain check on because I have a lot of stuff to do that day. Um, probably later in the afternoon, probably like 6 p.m. or something, 5 p.m., who knows. When it... When it uh, mm, it's going to have to be after 6 p.m. Because I'm working 2 to 6. So look for it after 6 p.m. Will probably be when I'm streaming. Probably somewhere closer to 7. Uh, maybe 7.30 to 8. Just because after I finish working, I'm probably going like, to shower and like lay around for like 10 to 20 minutes doing nothing. 
as one does. But I'll see you then. Hopefully we'll, I think, would be on track to fully finish Bloodborne in another stream. So look forward to it. Um, and if not then, then I will stream again on the weekend to finish up Bloodborne. And then maybe uh, over throughout the rest of the month of the December, I probably won't be streaming because I won't have access to my setup because I'll be at home for the holidays. Oh, hell yeah. The person we're raiding is taking a fat hit off of a bong, right? That's how you know it's going to be a good stream. Have fun, chat. See you soon. Sorry, VOD watchers. I forgot that you were here. Your gift for the VOD watchers. Hope you have a good day.